and there's the stuff that the that reporters report to us. Right. And I think that um, this whole change in how information is is exchanged in the world, and I want to get I want to talk about that Absolutely. today because I, I thought about that is is going to where towards something good. Right. right. Where information can be flowed freely if it's not censored. Right. right. Like like I the, thought the, the, Elon Musk. Yeah. Right. And well, the fact that, you know, because I'm, I'm going to be posting this to YouTube and the fact yeah. that like I have to like tiptoe around some of the thoughts that I'm having or some of the words that I'm saying in fear that it might get deplatformed because YouTube, of their definition. Instagram, Facebook, yeah, right. these places. Because of their definition right. of, of what may be true and what may be false. And again, I've got some stuff to talk about right. that when, when we when we get to it. But there's it, it definitely changes my perception about that. It's like um, um, during j- just to, to follow up on that yeah. during COVID-19, I was at strikes on both my Instagram and Facebook page and threatened to be kicked off for spreading um, articles and information that have now been proven to be true. Hello, good to see you, brother. Good to see you. It's been too damn long. Yeah, years, maybe. Yeah. And, maybe not, maybe. And the next time I see you, mm-hmm. you're going to be getting married, man. March 23rd. Very excited. Uh Six months, something yeah. like that. Yeah, yeah about six months. And uh, where's it gonna be at again? Justin, Texas. Justin, Texas. Justin, Texas. Nice. It is at um, the name of it, Lucky Spur Ranch. Uh huh. And it's like a barn, farm, house, modern kind nice. of wedding venue. Dude, that's awesome. You guys are an awesome couple because. You guys work together too, man, which yeah. is pretty cool. Cause yeah, that's right. I don't know if me and Carla could do that, dude. Yeah, yeah. We worked <laughs> no. together when we met. Yeah, yeah. That's we right. worked together still. That's right. Yeah. Went from went from waiting tables together yeah. to opening a real estate mogul business together. That's right. right. And she's building her first house now, uh, hiring out my company. Nice. She has Ranch Life Homes. Nice. And uh, I have what a house, and she's also a realtor, and she's selling the houses. So, so Ranch Life is her real estate company. Ranch Life Homes is her construction company. Oh, I got you. And she is now building houses as well. And then hiring um, Cherry Street Homes or What a House to build those houses for. Cool, man. Cherry Street Homes is my other company that I have with Carlos Fulton. Oh, we you have three guys construction co- companies. Here, bring that in just a tiny bit, just a little closer. It's like, so it's like a fist away from okay. here. If you need to twist that, yeah, push, it, push that away. It's perfect. So you and Carlos are doing something together too. Yes. Yeah. Nice. Yeah. So last September, Carlos started a company with me Mm -hmm. and we're doing new construction homes. Um, I'm kind of spearheading up until framed out and and then he's kind of taking over for the finishes. Nice. Thank you, sir. No worries, man. So... You've got umbrellas. You got got an umbrella company? Yeah. What's going on here? What's going on? Are you, are you offshoring this shit to the Caymans? It kind of started off because um, um, what a house. My company was kind of at capacity with what we could do. Yeah. And um, we had some opportunity to build some more houses. And um, Carlos had Alliance Restoration, which was his company that he ran for years. Yeah. Um, did a really good job remodeling additions, things like this. Uh, so, you know, we had a whole bunch of conversations. He came out to Whitesboro, checked out the operation. And, um, you know, we, we came up with, uh, uh, an idea to go in together and we've built four homes now, uh, two have sold and we got our third under contract this morning and we have one more that's going to be available in about Dude. three weeks. So. Dude, you are, uh, killing it, man. The market's been good. So fingers yeah, crossed dude. that it stays. Yeah. But you found the right spot in Weisboro cause that place is yeah. blowing up. You just like, you know, I mean. Not to take away from the hard work, but you were right. also right place at the right time for, Absolutely. That, for that location. And I really feel like I fell into it, you know. Um, yeah. They have a great school district. Yeah. They have a small town vibe. They have oh. a main street um, with businesses. And, um, you know, it's a destination for people that want to get out of the big city. Yeah. Um, live a little bit of a slower paced life. It's blown, it's blown up. People are yeah. building like crazy there. Yeah. And then yeah. people are great there. Yeah. Um, very friendly. Yeah. Um, Tip your hat to you. Yeah. Ma'am, sir. Absolutely. You, yes, you, ma'am. Yes, sir. You wear your cowboy hat yeah. when you work there. You I work do. There. Yeah, I do. Nice. Yeah. 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 <laughs> I wear it outside of there as well. Yeah. Now. Nice. Yeah. yeah. I saw you out at, was it Marcus's birthday last year? You yes. Were, or is yeah. It, was it his birthday? Or um, maybe not. Marcus's birthday, I didn't wear one. Yeah. But it was, some, it was something else. Another yeah. When we met. I was like, hey, that, that, it actually suits yeah. you well. The cowboy yeah. hat, man. It's your yeah. thing. Yeah. It, it fits yeah. good. Why don't you wear that today, man? <laughs> no, I was thinking about wearing yeah. it. Yeah. But, you know. Yeah. That's dope, man. Um, So. What about music, man? You've been doing any uh, 
doing any music on the site or listening to music or what's what's been your music um music wise i haven't i haven't really written recorded released anything in in quite a long time since i yeah. moved out to um grayson county which yeah. was in 2018 2019 yeah um i did a couple songs uh right before i made the move and um when i got out there i just started focusing on on yeah. construction and I business and kind of realigned my my goals and direction of life and um yeah so i haven't really been into music um, i enjoy listening to music you know i always play around with the idea of doing something if i was to do something with music it would be for me you know something that i i feel like i wanted to do never did something yeah. like that yeah i don't know how much i would you know try to push it or anything like that just for fun yeah it'd yeah. be for fun it'd be for me yeah totally uh yeah. just so everybody knows you and i were in a band together that's right since college you yeah. started a band called big red rooster big red back rooster. in the day my brother yeah. started the band michael yeah. meal shout out yeah yeah and then uh i joined like at, basically right after college i joined the band 2006 yeah. And then really, it was after college. It was right, you after, joined. It was right after, right after okay. we graduated. Right. We joined. I joined. Two thousand six. Two thousand six. Yeah. Okay. And then, and then we had a good three, four years. That's right. Four years of. Yeah. Doing music or partying? I don't yeah, know which one was it's the it. Same thing. Wait, wait. At the time, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. We were doing party Did we music. Write music, party music. Yeah. That's what it was. Yeah. We, yeah. I was like. Yeah. A bit of it was a lot of it was a blur, man. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then. Good thing we recorded a lot of it. Yeah. So, um, yeah, true. You know, so we, we remember can look it. back and, and remember. Yeah, man. I mean, dude, that's. I mean, I part of why what I'm why I'm doing what I'm doing today yep. is because I mean, mostly what I'm doing right. why I'm doing what we're doing is because of the band. That's right. So I mean, music production, piano, everything like that. It's because yeah. of the band when I joined. So it kind of maybe changed your my path. Yeah, yeah. your path. Maybe I should have gone into real estate though. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, it's never too late to change, yeah, I know, right? right? I know. Yeah. I just turned forty. I'm like, yeah, I'm like. Or just win the lottery. I gotta, I gotta will that yeah, too. Yeah, I turned 40, 40 last Saturday, so we're both now. That's right, man. Four uh, belated. That's thank right. You, yeah, yeah. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I didn't do anything crazy for my birthday either, Marcus. Neither did I. I just, uh, I had like Carla surprised me with the family. They came over and like nice. we had, we had uh, good. We had buff you know, a nice meal that she made. Nice. But it was like it was after I'd started carnivore. Yeah. So I was like, dude, I took it a little hardcore, man. I was, yeah. a, I was like, so I was a week into carnivore. Yep. Carnivore diet. Carnivore diet. Yeah. Yep. I was doing I was doing a 30 day time type of thing to reset and stuff and give it a shot. And I was like, okay, I can't quit this shit. I'm gonna stick with it. I'm not gonna not gonna stop. Even on my birthday. So my Carla, you're the best baker in the world. She is. Bad. Yeah. She makes the best Amazing. shit. But I was like, don't make me a cake. Wow. And uh, so I was like, figure something out. And then I got to thinking, what can I eat that's carnivore, that's decadent? And I started thinking about, okay, liver. I hate liver. And then yeah. the French, my French side popped me and said, you idiot. Foie gras, right? That's right. Which is duck liver, but I never yeah. kind of connotated the two. Because when I think liver, I think like beef liver. It's right. like chewy, chewy. and stuff. Um, so she made a cake for everybody else and literally brought me out. You know how foie gras, it's in a mold, right? It comes in a can. So when yeah. you pop it out, it's Very shaped soft, like the can. Right? It's you kind of mold it in. So she literally brought me a plate with a candle in it, a foie gras. I love it. It's pretty bad though. Yeah. Well, did <laughs> like, you eat it? Sit, oh yeah, I <laughs> ate it with the fork. But everyone was just staring at me like, poor little agave on top. Yeah. No. 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 Not car it's not carnivore. I was hardcore. Oh, that's right. Yeah. So I was like, yeah. everybody, everybody was staring at me like, Dude, yeah. what are you doing? I'm like, would honey be considered carnivore? Uh, no. Okay. It's not just because it, it does come from an animal, so it's a right. good question. But 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 the animal makes it from the fruit, and okay. it's got, and most importantly, it's got fructose in it. It's got sugar. In right. It. So it's a good question because I think some people would argue, be like, it came from an animal, just right. like like milk comes from an animal and right. there's sugar in it, right? Milk so, is part of the carnivore diet. Uh, yes, but it's okay. got sugar in it, right? So right. it's like, you know, they say to limit it. So what I did is just try to keep it simple. Think of it, I treated it like an, an elimination diet. Okay. So basically I cut out all I, and that's why I wanted to stick to the same foods. I wanted to just eat eggs, bacon, and beef. And that was it pretty much. Sounds delicious. It's great man, every yeah. day. And I've so, uh, you know, and the thing about eating that way, one, if you're not hungry, right. you're not going to eat. Right. And I wasn't, I wasn't doing it to lose weight per se. Cause okay. like I've got, I've got no desire to, to lose weight, but I wanted to yeah. just feel better. Right. And I know that when I did keto years prior, when I was in ketosis and was eating, you know, less carbs and my butt, body was running on ketones on right. fat, mentally I felt super sharp. And when you're doing carnivore, your body is in ketosis, ketosis. as well, right? The, okay. It only makes you know, through a process called gluconeogenesis, where it takes like protein um, and turns it into the glucose that your body does need. Cause your body still right. has glucose demands like okay. in the brain and, and other parts of the body. Absolutely. But 
um, it's only going to make what it needs, not having an excess of it. Right. Right. Um, and it's one of those things that, so I've been doing it for over 30 days now. And the longer I do it, the better I feel because my body has not been used to running on ketones for such an extended period of time. Okay. So, but mentally I feel super sharp. That's great. And I don't feel like I, I, I never feel like groggy from like crashing from eating carbs and coming down, you know? What about when you first wake up in the morning? No, I'm good. I Full sleep, of energy. I, 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 I sleep less. Okay. So, um, but not a lack of sleep. Not a lack of sleep. And I you're feel getting just solid sleep. Solid sleep. Less sleep. And I need like an hour less. So wow. before when I'd have to get like seven and a half hours. Yes. Now it's like six and a half, even six hours. Okay. I'm like, I'm like awake and I'm just like, okay, I'm awake. Yeah. So um, I'm going to keep it up and then get all the blood panels done to see how my, right. how everything looks. How many more days until then? Um, about, I'm about day 40. So about, uh, I'm going to do um, 90 days. So 50 more okay. days. So Almost gonna, halfway. Yeah, basically. Okay. And so like, I just want to see if I feel, if I, if I, if I'm feeling better and my numbers are all good, like mainly my hormones, my testosterone, my, um, my fasting glucose level, that's important to see where you are when your, your glucose levels mm -hmm. are when you're fasted, my IGF one, certain, uh, markers for inflammation and then just a standard, you know, normal, my lipid panels and, you know, fat panels, HDL, LDL, all that stuff. And then see how it goes, man. I love yeah. it. Yeah, man. Yeah. We'll good luck. Yeah, man. It's a great test. So you be, uh, speaking of going back to music, you've been listening yeah. to anything, anything good? Um, Any good artists that you're just like, you know, I'm sure something, um, there are things, nothing really kind of pops out to me right now. Um, you know, I just listened to the, the Richmond, North of Richmond. Have you heard this song? It's kind of going viral right now. No, I'd have to look up the gentleman who sings it. Um, North, North of Richmond, Richmond, North of Richmond. And, um, you know, it's kind of like a, a viral kind of anti-establishment kind of like, I guess, bluegrass country style song. Um, you know, I'm on social media a lot. Rich men north of Richmond. That, correct. All, Oliver Anthony music. Oliver Anthony, yeah. So he's kind of a new guy I'm checking out. Let's check it out. You're going to like this voice. I've been selling my soul, working all day, overtime hours. Bullshit pay so I can sit out here and waste my life away. Drag back home and drown my troubles away. That's pretty sweet, man. Yeah. I'm I'm like I'm limiting the sound because I'm like, if I put this on YouTube, are they gonna strike me? And yes, I think as that, far that as happens, the they, they can go they can either take it down or they can go after based, any monetary that based, you make from it. Yeah. Based on how long the video yeah. is. Yeah. Yeah. I know on Spotify because I'm playing I think this we're on safe. Spotify. Yeah. With that mount. I don't know. We'll have huh? to check. Right? It's like yeah. eight seconds yeah. you're safe. Yeah. yeah, we'll see. But yeah, I'll check this out. Absolutely. Richmond North of Richmond. Nice. I gotta check yeah. it out, dude. Uh yeah, dude. I haven't I haven't had a bug of music like Me neither. Like, very strange. Yeah. I, I don't know if it's because since since the band with us fizzled right. or we're just getting old and jaded, yeah. or we're just or we've been used to listening to the songs that we've listened to. Right. Or all music that's coming out now is shit. I don't know what it is. Yeah, I don't it could know be it, all AI, we don't know. Yeah, right? Yeah. I mean, there's some good music. I'm trying to think of like mainstream music that I've liked. Like, and you see something like this resonates a little more because it's less of this produced kind of thing and more of just an individual singing. Do with a guitar singing. I'm, I'm yeah. drawn more to that kind of thing now. There's another artist, Paul Cawthon. He was kind of making Ca buzz Cawthon? in Dallas. Paul Cawthon. Cawthon. Uh, Got to definitely check him out as yeah. well. Um, I gotta, yeah, for sure. He man. would be more on the produced side of country western, mm -hmm. but definitely not country western, if that makes sense. It's yeah. kind of like an evolution of country western. Oh, yeah. Well, that's, yeah, it's kind of like how countries come, right? Yeah. It's yeah. Like, it's, but not what you'd expect. So I yeah. wouldn't put him with like the radio stuff, although I think that he would be like, he, uh, Diplo just did a remix of one of his songs, for instance. How do you spell, how do you spell coffin? C A U T H E N. And, um, you know, there's some guys Paul that Coffin, are affiliated yeah. with him that, you know, Bo Bedford for one, from oh, really? Dallas. I, I believe he works with him and produced, produced for him in the past. Maybe he currently does. I'm not hundred percent sure. Cocaine country dancing. There you go. That sounds like a good title right yeah, there, man. Right. right? Yeah. Just wait till you hear the voice. You gotta be careful All with right. the eight seconds though. Yeah. That's okay. It goes. Roll up to the club. My 1964 Oh man! Yeah, I gotta All check right. him out. Both of those guys out. are great. Oh, that's awesome, dude. Um, so um, yeah, I mean, I, I'm trying to, I'm, I'm like going back on my playlist and like whatever the mo the most mainstream stuff that I've listened to is like Harry Styles. Some of his stuff was pretty yeah. cool from a production standpoint, but nice. I, everything I'm listening to is like old school, like 
Like we were, we road tripped it to Colorado a couple of weeks ago. Awesome. Went to Colorado Springs and uh, literally the entire time was either Doobie Brothers like style of music, like the road trip, you know, Love it. keep on a rocking it, baby. Yeah. You're just driving down the road, you know, or Steve Miller band, you know, Love like it. some awesome Steve Miller band songs, just awesome road trip driving. Right. Yeah. Like, isn't it funny how you set the right, find the right song and it sets the mood oh, for absolutely. the whole time. You're just like, got the windows down. Get in the zone. Oh man. So good, dude. That's pretty dope, man. Um, yeah, I mean, a lot of what I've been doing now, especially that I, not, you know, turning 40 has been like nostalgic. So right. like music, I'm listening stuff that I listened to when I was a kid, like what else? Video games. Yes. Like I don't play, I haven't played any new video games. Right. All the games that I've played have been, um, I've got this emulator on my computer so I can play all the old school games. I've got like, you know, I just introduced Luke, my son, the Turtles, the Nintendo one, the impossible nice. to beat one yes. where like you could, you can barely, nobody can beat the game. Right. I've been it once, but yeah, it was very with, che nice. with cheats, with cheats. Okay. Game Genie? <laughs> no, it was, uh, -huh. uh you, do, you can do save states. Okay. So like you can, you can press like save F1 states on, and the computer. It, on the computer. Yeah, the wrong. So you save it and then, and then if you die, you just press it and you're back to where you just were a second I ago. I just like to say uh, there's a lot of games I could never beat and in my older days, I have gone back with save states and beaten them. Yeah, yeah. Yes. Exactly. Yeah. And one of them was that turtle. And I've added it to my list of completed games. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Your check mark. That's you right. get that at home on the, on I the wall. I have a list of every year and 80% of it's retro games. Which one's the, which, what are your top five favorite or let's do five, top five hardest followed by top five favorite. Games? R r games. Uh, that I've beaten? That you've beaten. Or just favorite. Let's just go with five let's go of with my five favorite. favorite. Okay. Yeah. So Donkey Kong Country for the Super Nintendo. Nice. Classic. Super Mario Brothers 2 for the regular Nintendo. Interesting choice. Good choice. Those are a couple. Um. I went back and beat, uh, for the Sega Genesis, the um, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. I can't remember the name. Manhattan Project. Oh. Is it it was a beat-em-up game. You could be really? any of the four turtles. I never played that one. Yeah. yeah. And then a great new game for the Switch and PlayStation 5 and everything is um, Teenage Mutant Mutant Ninja Turtles Shredder's Revenge. Yeah, It's a here. new beat-em-up with updated graphics. Dude, and you Luke. can play as Shredder and Splinter and April and like is it, like Jake. A the hockey guy is it Jake? Yeah, Jake yeah. and the turtles. So you could is it like like Mortal Kombat style where you're facing each other? No, kind of it's thing? not. It's like a beat 'em up, which where you're kind of roaming around these side scrolling, but oh, kind like the of from like a the top arcade down. game used to be. Yeah, okay, just like the arcade game. Yeah, okay, because I played. So it's based off of the arcade game, right? Which is basically like that one and the arcade, which was the Turtles Two for Nintendo, yes. and then Turtles which was, in I Time, think the Manhattan Project on the Sega Genesis. Don't quote me on this, but I oh, think it's the same, same game. Nice. Yeah, yeah. That, one, that one was fun. And man. I went back and beat it with save states. Hell yeah. Yeah. Nice, man. Yeah. See, for you, I thought, because we used to play this all the time, I thought Street Fighter would be on your top five. I have the arcade cabinet. Yeah. 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 I have oh, about yeah, right. a dozen arcade cabinets now. Oh, you do? Yeah. A dozen? Yeah, probably about a dozen, maybe a little more. Yeah, so you, I've been you have a whole them. man cave, like a whole section in I your have, place? Right? I have about, yeah, it's one of the bedrooms. It's just the arcade. Nice. Um, I've got maybe... 10 in there, maybe in another four in storage. Yeah. Are they like the legit old school arcades or are they like more condensed versions? They're the three quarter arcade one up versions. Nice. I don't know if you know anything about the company arcade one up. No, oh, I've seen ads on like Facebook yes. once in a while. They're but... reproducing retro arcade machines in three quarter size. Yeah. Um, so it's not like it doesn't weigh a ton. Like the old You can ones. lift it yourself and carry it around the house. That's genius. And then if you want to raise it to the height, you can get a uh, special made risers. Nice. Or you can have them sit low and they come with uh, matching stools. How much How much are those? How much is one arcade on average? Well, when they first came out, they were like two forty nine. I bought Mortal Kombat. I bought Street Fighter. Now nice. they're up to like, I think Killer Instinct was like six ninety nine. Wow. For so, one game. Yes. But now there's now their internet uh, compatibility leaderboards. So, oh, you know, they, so you're, yeah. oh, okay. You so can, it makes up, it you can down, uh, uh, update uh, uh, software. Yeah. You know. That's dope. So, the, you know, you are getting a little bit more, but it's kind of outpriced, just like the average collector, yeah. you know? Yeah. So what are your, what 12, what are your 12 that you've mm. got? What are your 12, 12 arcades? Okay. I got, let me just try to run through this. I have Street Fighter 2. I have Mortal Kombat. So the Street Fighter 2 is Street Fighter 2 and Street Fighter 2 Championship Edition. And the, and I think, yeah. And then Mortal Kombat, Mortal Kombat 1, Mortal Kombat 2, Mortal Kombat 3, all on one machine. Oh, nice. NBA Jam. Yeah, he's on fire. Uh, I have Pac-Man, Miss Pac-Man. Nice. I have a Galaga Galaxin. Dude, love, love, love those. I have uh, um, Final Fight. Do you remember that? Dude, for that was a Sega game. Yeah, I used to and play you could all walk through and you could pick up the pipes I and hit people. I played Final Fight on Sega CD. There you go. That's what I played it on. Yep, yep I got I Final that. Fight. And that comes with like that game, 1983 or eight, 
1943, the helicopter the shooter. Yeah, that one's great. Um, let's see what else. That's six. I have, um, what is the game called? Not Fast and Furious, but what it's is, a racing game. It's a Sega racing game. Cruising USA? No, that was Not later. cruising. Um, it's going to come back to me. I have The Simpsons beat em up. Four player Simpsons nice, beat em up. that was fun. I have the Terminator with the guns. Where you can no shirt. way, T2, yeah. where you're shooting that the Terminator. Oh, dude, yeah. that... Do the do the guns the guns vibrate? Uh, shake yeah no and dude. they're they're kind of stuck to the you know you can't pull them yeah, off they're yeah. kind of stuck no, there. No, remember that they had the Uzis. When am I coming over to play yeah, these? Yeah, let's dude? do it. Oh Absolutely, God, dude. I'm gonna come over and play that. I amazing. have um then I have a Legends arcade which which probably has 20 built-in games. Yeah, but I have a USB that has every single system: Atari, uh, Game Boy, Nintendo, Super Nintendo, Sega, it's like an Genesis, emulator, it's like Raspberry has, Pi kind I, of I have, thing. I have the entire catalog for every system on that USB. And I can pop it into the Legends arcade, and I can play any game from any of the systems on my arcade machine. And you can you save? Can you? And save you it? have save states. I bought. I beat Donkey Kong Country on the Legends uh, uh, arcade. And is yeah. it is it an arcade controller? Like it's the, arcade controllers. And how do you how does that feel compared to like a, a old school hand? Um, and, it's it, I enjoy it. It's, yeah, yeah it's you just gotta same. get used to it. You know. Dude, so my favorite, dude, I can just show you. Actually, no, I'm recording. I don't want to mess up the recording. Yeah, yeah. But um, I've got the emulator. I I think my. Nintendo, uh -huh. Nintendo, old school Nintendo top five would have to be um, Zelda, the first one. Okay, love it. That was literally the first game I ever played too, yes. when I was a kid. Um, the Ganon. Ganon, Ganon yeah, yeah, the old boss. Dude, uh -huh. I played that game so many times. Um, Turtles, the first one. Right. The really hard one with the water level that was yes. like hard to beat, you know? Yeah. Then um, um, Zelda 2, which is Link. Link. And then the last two. That's are the like, side scrolling. Yeah, the side yeah. scroller one. And then the the last two kind of cycle. It's it's it cycles. Yeah. I cycle through a bunch. Yeah. I think my favorite system was probably Super Nintendo though. Me too. Like Super Nintendo, uh, Super Metroid. That was our prime. Uh, Chrono Trigger. I did a lot of role playing games, which I didn't. Think, nice. I don't know if you were into you role playing um, games that much. No, kind of like Final Fantasy Final style Fantasy games. I, did, I didn't really play a lot of those. Yeah. 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 Good. Those were like two massive yeah. time investments. I, I don't play any of those types of games now. Is I'm Tetris just like, for the Nintendo on your top list? Ah, oh, dude. That put a lot of hours well, on our see, Nintendo. I count Tetris for Game Boy. Okay. Because that's yes. what I had on the Game Boy. That came with the Game yes. Boy. So for me, it was, yeah. it was that two. That was the pack-in game. It was Tetris and yeah. uh, Super Mario Super World. Mario Land. Land. Yes. Ah, well, Land. That's yeah. right. Yeah. yeah, that was another great where, game. Where the Goombas, or the they were like yeah. so tiny when you jumped on them. And, and and you could link the Game Boys to both of those games. And yeah. I think you could play as, the second person could play as Luigi, maybe it, on Super Mario Land. I think so. I could I be wrong. Yeah. And on Tetris, Tetris you, could you could play, play each, each other, other in yeah. battle mode. That was awesome, With the dude. link cord. That's right. Yeah, and I guess those, that would, on, on Game Boy, it would be that, and then... Um, the Link's Awakening, I played that yeah. a bunch. So I say Zelda is probably Link's one of my favorites. So where the the where you have to, I think it's Link. Yeah, you wake up on an island and you have no idea how you got there. Right. And like it's a big one, big dream concocted by like this whale. It's like a dream. What Listen. system? Game Boy. Game Boy. Yeah. Wow. It came okay. out in like ninety three or something like Love that. It. Yeah. Yeah, man. So so yeah, I think like after tr becoming be like having my midlife crisis at forty, I'm yeah. like just focusing on like the. Uh, the simpler things, yeah. you know? The things. So, so my theory is, okay, so everyone's kind of in our age is kind of, you know, older movies, older TV shows, older uh, video games, music, like you said, right? We're yeah. not really turning to the modern stuff as much. Is that because we don't connect with that? Or is it because just our age, we're starting to now look back kind of, you know, longing? I know when my dad first discovered nostalgia, YouTube, right? yeah. nostalgia, he would stay on YouTube for hours looking up all the songs from his past yeah. every decade. And he still does that, you know, yeah. so it's an, it's an interesting, you know, because, um, you know, the younger guys, I, ha I have a lot of, Maria has a lot of nieces and nephews and they are all into the new stuff. Yeah. You know, you know, if they'll, I, they'll, they'll let us play some of the old stuff sometime. Yeah. Play along, but you know, the new stuff's intense. Dude, I, some of the, I just can't get into some of the new stuff. Like if it's, same. if it's like rap, it's the production's all the same. Right. Uh, it's all mumble rap. I found a yeah. few good, uh, there's one kid that I found a producer on Instagram called Connor Price. Okay. He has that, um, he's got that little flute. <laughs> oh, dude, I got to pull Connor it up. Connor Price. I'm going to yeah. check him out. He's, uh, um, he's an actor from Toronto, but also uh, a rapper and he has these Drake cool. Drake 2.0. Yeah, basically. Uh, it's called Spinning, but listen to it. Listen. Oh, wow. I like it. Is that a recorder? Some, yeah, something. Hey, I'll tell you about how he makes this video. It's hilarious. 
Yeah, look, they said that I couldn't do it, so I went and did it. W's only, you know I've been winning. Top of the world, the globe is spinning, spinning. If you know, you know, I've been on a what? Mission. Okay, let's get it. Got a little time on my hands like a wristwatch. I don't got time for the breaks and the pit stop. Race through the grid lock. Take it like Chris Rock. Right to the chin. Still win. Heavy metals like Slipknot. Got the drive and I got tunnel vision. I just hit my stride. Pretty cool, right? Yeah. He's got, he's, 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 uh, he's got like, like logic vibes a little yeah. bit. Yeah. You know? He has a little bit of the modern cadence. Yeah. yeah, yeah. But he's very lyrical, obviously. Yeah. And, uh, and the beat's it, awesome. Yeah. It, he's, it, he's a producer. He does the rapping and he, uh, he, he produces. Does, yeah, he, he does wow. the production. And then the videos he does are hilarious. So like a skit of, it's just him playing different characters. You know how they like play themselves in yeah. different outfits. And he's got like a weird brother who's just like totally awkward. And so he he's like, what are you doing? And he's sitting in his studio and two versions of himself, you know, because it's all him, right? In different outfits are trying to record a session. Love and st it. He's staring off at what's his brother, which is basically him in a nerd outfit wearing glasses. It looks like Steve Jobs. And he's carving a carrot. And he's like, what are you doing? He's like, nothing. Like, are you carving a carrot right now? He's like, yeah. And he's carving it to a flute. And then he starts to play the flute. No and that's way. the flute there. He's not really Genius. playing the flute, but yeah. it's like, it, it's hilarious. Entertaining. Yeah. Check him out. Connor Price. Okay, I will. Yeah. Um, yeah. We'll put all these links in the bio. Yeah, man. And and you, uh, I mean, you, as far as music goes, talking about listening to old stuff. I remember when we were driving in the, in the van on tour. Yeah. Who was the band that was talking about the reptilian band? Head P.E. Head P.E. Yeah, Head Planet Earth. Yes. Yeah. Because cause, uh, I've seen all these funny memes of like um, Zuckerberg being a reptilian. Yeah. And so like it's like this conspiracy theory. And the lady on the plane recently. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. So what is a reptilian? <laughs> okay, so a reptilian, there's the historical and biblical versions. All ancient societies had, you know, um, gods, dragon gods. Um, the ch ancient Chinese had dragon gods. You see it with a lot of Native American tribes, African tribes, these kind of like, you know, dragon gods. In the Christian Bible, you had the walking, talking serpent that gave Eve and Adam the fruit. Okay. So you kind of through religion, you see this pattern of the reptilian. And in the modern kind of like UFO uh, uh, concept, you know, UFO is big in the news. It's, it's um, a, a form of alien, um, you know, that, that, looks like a human in in kind of our basic shape but skin of reptilian um I'm gonna look, I'm gonna look this up. reptilians reptoids reptiloids this is wikipedia lizard people are supposed reptilian humanoids which play a prominent role in fantasy science fiction ufology and, con and conspiracy theories the idea of reptilians was popularized by david ike a conspiracy theorist who claims shape-shifting reptilian aliens control earth by taking on human form and gaining political power to manipulate human societies. Right. That's crazy. Uh, so the Bible thing could be like, that could be though, like an analogy for, because reptiles, when you can call someone a snake, you know, right. reptiles are like considered to be like, for some reason, like devious, conniving, conniving characters. Yes. Yeah. So there's that side from the Bible that you could also interpret, right? right. As that as being, you know, the snake on the yeah, tree. Yeah, if you, if you interpret it literally or figuratively, figuratively, right? yes. But, um, but, but you, do you think that these things, that they actually are, are real? I do believe they're real. Get out of here. Yeah, I do believe they're real. I believe, um, in, in, you know, what people call demons, angels. I believe in what people call aliens. I believe in what people call interdimensional beings. I do believe that there are other things. I do think that they're interacting with us. For sure. I think. Or observing us. Yeah. Or, or stepping in and key points in, uh, humans history to kind of direct in a certain path right see i i think that i mean there's no way that there can't be aliens right? i agree but if you think about like the and what some people call aliens other people call other things right but there's some kind of intellectual entity outside of humans uh, else, and that's out of earth yes like, when you think about like like you know I, I had i heard a good analogy the other day if you fill up a cup of water of the ocean and there's nothing in it you can you can make the assumption that the ocean is empty, right? But when you think about the full amount of life that there is in the ocean, you compare that to us in space. It's like we are, and, and this is like infinitely bigger, or just right? Put that we are ocean water under a microscope, exactly. Yeah, and that's like what the Earth is compared to the rest of the right. universe. There's right? definitely life in there. Yeah, there there has to be, yeah. right? Even if the statistics are, you know, 
are very small for their to for to accommodate life. Mm-hmm. Like how lucky we are to have had a planet that accommodated life. Right. Point zero 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 one percent percent. Right. Statistically, there are enough planets out there to meet that. That there could be at least you know multi. There could be hundreds. Who knows? Right. Uh, but the question is, is are those people have have those people come down or are watching us? Because like you know, uh, well, we'll get to aliens because I I, I want to ask yeah. you some questions because I've been reading some stuff in the in the in the right. in the uh, in the news as well. But um, the question is, is is um, are reptilians are reptilians the aliens that we're talking about? And we just call them reptilians, but do they do they have that reptilian form? You know, do you think that they right. have that reptilian form, or is it? Could they be in different forms? Like when you, when you, because to me, the idea of a reptilian is something right. that to me seems too man made. The concept of it, right. why, I, I, why I don't think that necessarily they are reptilian in that sense is that because it's something that like we may not have necessarily concrete proof of that I know of. Right. But like the idea that maybe it's guised as something else, something that we just maybe not a rep, somebody could disguise as a reptile like Mark Zuckerberg. <laughs> right. Know, yeah. That? I've seen so many yeah. funny memes it, of him. It, it like, could be know. some kind of like, um, parasitic, um, you know, um, so, somehow they've, they've taken, you know, um, you, you, I really just don't know, you know, but, but, but aliens, for instance, I believe everyone, the majority of people believe in aliens these days, whether they'll say so or not. I think that it's so engraved in us through, you know, movies, TV yeah. since from, from when we were children and, and now, you know, they're kind of making it mainstream and news cycles and everything else. But I, I think the majority of people probably believe in aliens. Now, if those are like, for instance, president Biden is actually a reptilian in some kind of costume or a reptilian that can take on human shape. We have no evidence of anything like this. Right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. You know? Yeah. And that's the thing. It's like, you know, wanting to be careful of like, you know, saying crazy things, but that, because yeah. like, conspiracy theories, some have been proven to be not theories, right? right. So it's like... I would say, what's the difference between the truth and a conspiracy theory? About uh, six months. Uh, <laughs> it's even faster these days. Is that a, that's, like a, that's, a good, that's a joke right there. Yeah. A sad joke, actually. Yeah. yeah. Dude, so there's this, guy on, uh, there's this guy on Instagram called Austin Nasso. Have you followed him? Uh, I know two... Eddie Chen and mm-hmm. Austin and BA follow him because I know you can see who follows them. But dude, yeah, he's a comedian. He does You're these funny these skits right now. Yeah, dude. Hold on. He's uh, he's he uh, he does these skits of being like Mark Zuckerberg. Community guidelines violation. Jujitsu skills downloaded. Now that the metaverse has fallen, you must battle me in the real world. If I win, you get laid off, and I devour your soul. If you win, you get $100 in Facebook ad credit for your small business. I will turn your human flesh into a pretzel. And he disappears. Like, you know, yeah. these, these, these like imitation that will steal your soul. And like there's somewhere he's like pretending to be like, he calls himself a reptile. There was the whole thing on Joe Rogan where he was like, there was a whole reptilian question or something about yes. you know, calling him a reptile. So it's, it's funny that I feel like. Uh, and there, there are like um, little clips here and there of Zuckerberg making suspect comments yeah. you know my human form or something like that or he's just but also he could be dude, trolling us he could be tr- he could be trolling us yeah it's either one of two things one of three things he's a reptilian yes he is trolling the hell out of us yes which i don't think those two are it i think the third one is is it he's just the most so, one of the most socially awkward dudes on the planet there's something and has no idea how to talk to there's to something people. different about him that that gives people weird vibes. Yeah, yeah. But there, I mean, I know a lot of creepers like that. Absolutely. You know what I mean? That are like and that. a lot of intellectuals are like that. Yeah, right. You people know? who are extremely smart but lack the social savants, maybe yeah. in some sort. Right, right. Mm. So, um, and they're easy targets. Yeah, you're you right. know exactly. Would you would you consider yourself to be a conspiracy theorist? If someone say this guy's a cons- would you would you openly say I'm a conspiracy theorist? I would in the sense that I'm going to. I'm go- it's going to be very difficult for me to believe anything coming from any mainstream source at this point. Right. And that's why I have issues with the current mainstream kind of um, UFO rollout, alien rollout. It's, if it's coming from the people that it's coming from, make me highly suspect of the timing and the message. Um, so in that sense, I would say I'm a conspiracy theorist. Well, there is, you, you got to think about the motivation of now just recently releasing right. these articles with when in the, like no major news outlet would have ever outlined something 
resembling what's going on now with aliens, right? right? But at the same time, yeah, like why is it that, uh, what's his name? So there's that guy, um, what's his name? David Grush. Yes. He's the guy who spoke out um, over testimony. Whistleblower? Yeah, basically call him a whistleblower. Um, I'll just read this because I don't have a good memory. Retired Major David Grush's highly anticipated testimony. This is from Associated Press, by the way. Before a House Oversight Subcommittee was Congress's um, latest foray into the world of UAPs, which is replaced now UFOs, yes. right? How Un slick. Unidentified aerial phenomena, right. which sounds a hell of a lot cooler than unidentified yeah. flying object, right? Yeah. That sounds way more way cooler. Um, but uh, while the study of mysterious aircraft or objects often evokes talk of aliens and little green men... Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Democrats and Republicans in recent years have pushed for more research as a national security matter due to concerns that sightings observed by pilots may be tied to U.S. adversaries. And that, that's the thing. like Or U.S. made things themselves. Right. That, compartmentalized. That, 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 the that the pilots don't know about. Right. Correct. There's so many different compartment, uh, different divisions and so right. many black, red tape to go through all these And the top billions that go missing go into these kinds of projects yeah. really in the United States. It right. could be ours. It, exactly. Yeah. So it's like. And the government might have no idea. See, my thoughts and are. And we might be funding it. Right. No idea. Right. And that, to me, that, to me. Again, I'm not discounting that there might be life on other right. planets, but to I me, think we both agree that there's some kind of life yeah. outside of our human existence. Statistically, there has right. to be, right? But um, but the likelihood that this is because if you think about it, like all of these witnesses of what could be alien life mm -hmm. have been made by like government agencies or during from pilots, not from like everyday people, right? Most of the times, and it seems kind of unlikely that that would be the case that not to say that the aliens aren't smart enough to be able to find the intelligence the high intelligence agencies and go right. to them but it seems unlikely it seems a lot more likely that it's either um foreign mm -hmm. you know because we know that you know the you know from a from a from my understanding china and russia's um, the, the big bad wolves yeah china, well china and russia's their uh their aerial the capabilities boogeyman. their aerial capabilities are are quite advanced more so than us as yes. far as that goes so so it could be them it could be us and we don't know about it yeah but but a lot of what people are saying about these these objects that literally go from like five feet above the ground sea level to like 10,000 feet in a matter of seconds. Come out of the ocean. Yeah, come out of the ocean. 10,000 feet and back yeah, down and into back the down ocean. In the matter of like... Defies, Instantaneously. Defi defies the laws of right. physics as we know right it. Right turns. Right, just like Stopping, boom, boom. starting. Yeah. yeah. Uh, so, but, but you know, you look at... You can't compare them to drones, obviously, but you look at the way drones maneuver. Right. And drones maneuver in a very kind of visual similar way, yes. right? So, uh, yeah, I have... Again, I... My brain, I'm not wired for, it's, for understanding it's, the it's, physics. It's, an, it's an, uh, a secret technology, a, a tightly contained technology, if it is human, right. for sure. Yeah, for sure. Something that, that has been purposely hidden from us. Mm. Um, I would just say, knowing how much our governments lie to us, I would question anything coming from the government. Yeah, I mean, you know. Unfortunately. Yeah, I mean, again, I think things, I th here's my thing with, with that statement. I, I don't disagree with it. I think, unfortunately, there are people that are truly in search of the truth, unbiased truth. And so when you say the government, I'm like, well, the only place that we get our news from are news outlets, but news outlets and the government are tightly woven today, especially, right? Yes, absolutely. So, so, so they, you, you know, so yeah, the, there's the stuff that the government hides from us. And then there's the stuff that the, that reporters report to us. Right. And I think that, um, this whole change in how information is is exchanged in the world, and I want to get I want to talk about that Absolutely. today because I, I thought about that is is going to where towards something good, right? Right, where information can be flowed freely if it's not censored, right? right. Like like the, off the, to Elon Musk, yeah, right. And well, the fact that you know, because I'm I'm going to be posting this to YouTube, and the fact yeah. that like I have to like tiptoe around some of the thoughts that I'm having or some of the words that I'm saying in fear that it might get deplatformed because YouTube, of their definition. Instagram, Facebook, yeah, right. these places. Because of their definition right. of, of what may be true and what may be false. And again, I've got some stuff to talk about right. that when, when we when we get to it, but there's it, it definitely changes my perception about that. It's like um um during just to to follow up on that, yeah. during COVID nineteen I was had strikes on both my Instagram and Facebook page and threatened to be kicked off for spreading um, articles and information that have now been proven to be true. Right, right. Yeah. So like, 
Um, yeah, let's just let's just talk about that because I, I I totally agree with you. I think um, like well, yeah, censorship during the pandemic, right? And, and the thing is, is you know I've seen studies I've seen studies that both tout the efficacy of masks, for example, right. let's say masks are effective depending on the type of mask, and then others completely throw away that it's that that that, that is immunity is the best. But right, but the the, the fact that um, that you you have to be censored as to be, because we don't because there are other studies that contradict others. It is an ever ongoing change. For example, take sugar and fat. Right, yes. Ansel Keys. I don't know if you're familiar with Ansel Keys, uh, but he was a yes. he was a sci- <laughs> <laughs> I know the guy. Yeah, he was a scientist. He was the, the scientist responsible for the demonization of fat. Right. And the surgeon, the, res- the surgeons, the Common surge story. of the sugar industry, right? Yes. So money, money motivated him to, to say, okay, fat kills mm-hmm. fat gives, and, and fat kills, fat's bad for you. Eat more sugar. Right. And so grocery stores started mass producing food, cutting fat out of yogurt and replacing it with sugar. Yep. Just to, because if you've ever tasted anything without fat, like yogurt without fat, it tastes like shit. So yeah. you add sugar to make it taste good. So, um, and what happens uh, less than a generation or a generation later is you have obese people for the first time. Diabetes. Now that's, again, that correlation doesn't imply causation as far as, the, as, as far as diabetes go and the people being overweight. The fact that we have been able to produce way more food in the last, you know, 40 years right. and it's just ramped up at how fast we can manufacture food and the fact that food in itself has become a lot more palatable. So like you can eat a lot more and not feel right. full. When I eat meat, if I'm full, I'm full. Correct. If you eat eggs, a boiled egg and you, you you're not going to eat another boiled egg if you're not hungry. Right. You know what I'm saying? So, but with like, with like, you don't get boiled egg munchies. I can, yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah bro, I me another boiled egg. No, screw that. Scramble that shit, dog. Yeah. No, dude. Yeah, exactly. You're just scarfing chips down your throat and you can do that all day. So, so people will get, you know, you, there's something to be said about that, but, but it's clear now that sugar reduction in sugar has a marked improvement on people's, um, satiety, you know, meaning feeling full. You know, you lower sugar, you're less likely to eat more often. Sugar is a drug. It's been Correct. shown that it has the same kind of dr- reactions. Ups and downs. Exactly. Crashes, um, withdrawals. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Um, and so um, in, in that same respect, um, there's been a lot. Who's, how can the government or any private entity decide as to what they consider to be the truth? Correct. And that's my big issue with government overreach mandating laws and... Um, or even a private corporation, again, they're private, so they can do what they want. Like right. YouTube can strike any video down and that's fine. That's their prerogative. I agree with that. But I don't want to infringe on their right. But I would much rather something like say, uh, Elon Musk at X saying, Hey, well, recently he just said, we are never going to delete an account. Right. Right. And to me, that's a lot better place to be in. And so what if I have to deal with people, you know, I'm Jewish. If people are, if there are, if there are racists out there that don't like Jews, I don't care. I'd rather them right. be making those comments in a, on a public forum in order for, for there to be transparency than them to be told that they can or what they can and can't right. say, because you it's understand a, where that leads to. It's a slippery slope right? because what I define as hate speech can be what somebody else defines. It's not subjective. Right. Oh, sorry, it is subjective. There's no such there's thing no, as hate speech. There's just speech. There's it, it's it's object. It's not objective. So, for for example, like um, take Canada and the, these compelled speech laws that they've had. So I don't know if you're familiar with the compelled speech laws that Canada has had or has. No, but I believe I've heard that same kind of conversation with South Africa. Um, they kind of had similar. Discussions, and that's a big thing that Jordan Peterson has had as a reason why he became on the forefront of uh, and hated by a lot of far left. He's Canadian, left-leaning. correct? He's Canadian, yes. yeah. And, and, a, a and lo- he he challenged these. He challenged these, and, and these he laws. was loved in Canada, correct? Well, until that, happened. until he challenged, and then these. and then when it came to the point of him not, uh, he he was threatened with, uh, I believe. I don't know if it was, I don't want to get this wrong, but revoking his license or being not being allowed into a a, a member of of psychological physicians, wow. you know, there's a board of physicians that's, that's not a board, but like a, a, a you know, like a, a, 
Yeah, a group of physicians, you know, like, there's American Heart Association, American right. Heart Association. Anyways, uh, but so, you know, I wanted to, to read was, um, this is from um, the uh, cbc.canada. So it's their, it's their own website. Uh, there's a couple of, um, of professional or, or law, prof law professionals or experts that were kind of, what's the word, deducing what this, this compelled speech law is. Right. So this is from their site. It said, um, Bill C-16 added the words gender identity and expression to three places. It was, at, and just so anybody who doesn't know, this idea is um, if somebody, if you don't refer to somebody as whatever their preferred pronoun is, then there's a chance that you might get in trouble for that by, right. from a law standpoint. And so in, to me, in, in so, California, children have been taken from their parents for the same for the same thing. Yes. So, uh, this is a very real thing. Yeah. I, I've heard of that again. I've heard of that happening in Canada as well, uh, where, um, where the same kind of situation happened. So I'll read, I'll quote here. First, it was added to the Canadian Human Rights Act, joining a list of ident identifiable groups that are protected from discrimination. These groups include age, race, sex, religion, disability, among others. Now, I don't think there's anything that there's anything wrong with protecting people's rights. Right. So, so I'm okay with saying no matter what you identify as, no matter what your race, no matter what you, no laws can be put against you. Yeah. Hats you know, off uh, to you. Uh, yeah. And, and I think everybody should celebrate should, it. Right. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, you know, of course there's certain laws like, you know, um, that are physically demanding. Like for example, a kid can't ride a roller coaster because if he does, he'll fall out of it. You know, that's right. Like, we're not, I'm not going <laughs> to height bias, you know, like yeah. could discriminate you based but, on but height. This is where it leads to. to it, there's it, no, right. it's, it's it, the ridiculousness could never end. Right. So, um, Second, it was added to a section of the criminal code that targets hate speech defined as advocating genocide um, and the public incitement of hatred where it joins other identifiable groups. Now, I have a problem with that wording because advocating genocide, I, sh I believe, is, is not hate speech. It, well, it, it is hate speech, but it's also also inciting violence. When you are saying that this person, based on their color, should be dead— I, I think that's drawing a fine line and that's getting, that's, that's where I think that there can be some sort of thing, just like you can't yell fire in a crowded building, right? right? There's, there's certain Bomb things, on a plane. exactly that kind of stuff. But, um, but then the second half is, um, which it said defined as advocating genocide and the public incitement of hatred. Now that is a very, very nebulous statement. Subjective, correct? It is a very subjective statement and that's my problem with right. it. It's, it, it's, 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 I, I, I wish that everybody would be friendly, but if somebody happens to say something, because we're humans and we miscommunicate, that is not intended as hateful and is taken as hateful, then th because that other person identified it as hateful because it's subjective, then they can be held, th that other person can be held liable for criminal charges for that reason. And right? I take it a step further and say that ideas that could affect everyone deserve to n n be even challenged and and those challenges of those ideas should not be illegal, right? And we and especially not only, when those ideas could affect everyone, not right. just the people who have those ideas. Totally, and we should be able to talk about this on Correct. on platforms right. to be able to discuss these things. Like, say, why do I think why do I think it's it's not right to to or why 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 hate hate speech should I thought be you were made illegal? Give an example as a careful. No, 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 exactly. <laughs> right. I'm like tiptoeing around this shit because yes. it's ridiculous. Right. It's yeah. like. You should be able to say what you want to right. say, and and that be it. Because right. I would I would much rather it be that way than yeah. people having to tiptoe. And and you see it, people are tiptoeing around and, and things I believe that they can't, that they can't when say. It's more like that way, yeah, it's going to bring everyone together because we're going to see more similarities in ourselves and with the individuals through these conversations. Right, but yes, so exactly. they're, they're stopping these conversations from happening so that they can build these barriers. But it's also this this line of thinking is. Thank God for living in America because it is very a different mentality in in right. different countries. People don't understand, like, and I didn't understand it until as I as I got older, the privilege it is to be able to live in a country where right. you can say whatever right. you want. And when it comes to the point to where those those that that right that makes this country great becomes infringed upon, then um, then that's when things again go down a slippery slope. Right. Listen, there there is a fine, there is a gradient, right, between there being um, being able to say 
very violent things and then being able to not say anything and being like in, you know, living in communist Russia or China and being right. censored and not being able to, to, to speak whatever your truth is. But censorship should not exist. And I agree. So, so third, it was added to a section of the criminal code dealing with sentencing for hate crimes. If there's evidence that an offense is motivated by bias, prejudice, or hate, it can be taken into account by the courts during sentencing. And again, how do you prove that? You like, it's, it's, there is not, not, not just, not how do you prove that? How do you quantify it? Mm -hmm. How do you say that this is hate speech, but that's not like right. there is no measurable amount of, of a way to measure it at all. So, um, Let's see. Pronoun usage. Does the bill legislate the use of certain language? And could someone go to jail for using the wrong pronoun? In the criminal code, which does not reference pronouns, Crossman, one of the uh, legal experts, says misusing pronouns alone would not constitute a criminal act. So, quote, the misuse of gender pronouns without more cannot rise to the level of a crime, she says. It cannot rise to the level of advocating genocide inciting hatred hate speech or hate crimes it simply cannot meet the threshold okay so that's good right right um would it cover the accidental <laughs> misuse of a Excuse pronoun me. it's very unlikely if someone refused to use a preferred pronoun and it was determined to constitute discrimination or harassment could that lead to result in jail time it is possible brown says through a process that would start with the complaint and progress to a proceeding before a human rights tribunal, if the tribunal rules that harassment or discrimination took place, there would be typically, they would typically be an order for monetary and non-monetary non remedies. A non-monetary remedy, remedy may include sensitivity training, issuing an apology, or even in publication ban, he says. This is, like, this is ridiculous. Being Scary. Able, we are, we should be able to deal with things, hurtful things that people say and deal with it. I'm sorry. Yes. It, there's no, I, I, it's healthy. It is healthy to deal with it. Yes. You know who to surround Bring yourself around. Bring bullying back. No, I'm joking. Yeah. I'm joking. <laughs> no, but no, I'm joking. I, listen, I, I, I was, we were uh, that's all, a, that's a meme. It's, it's that's why I said that. Bullying. It yeah. is a meme. Yeah. We were all bullied as kids. Yes. Everybody. And everybody was. Everybody and everybody yeah. will be. To different degrees. And, yeah. and, and, you know, obviously I'm not. Advocating, but I, I I don't want my my kid to right. to be to be coddled or right. live in a world where she can't handle or my son can't right. handle the stress of being criticized or right. being made fun of. Correct, because it's going to so happen. It's your duty to roast your kids, Pierre. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> You look ridiculous in that. You look ridiculous in that Spider-Man outfit, man. Give him a hug. <laughs> but I love you. Yeah, yeah, man. So. Um, you know, it's uh, again, these kinds of laws should should have no place in they should have no place in rule of law, right. in my opinion. I agree. Um, so going back to the the whole the whole alien business, um, you uh, you used to be in a band called Delta Maze. Correct. Which which. Delta Maze. Sorry. Yes. How do I do the triangle? You used to do. Oh, you did it like that, right? Yeah. There you go. Oh, that's what it was. Um is reference to the Illuminati. Yes. Right? So, Secret Society, is that what it, it was? Uh, it was uh, Latin for the enlightened, essentially. Correct. Right? Um, the Illuminati. The Illuminati, which, um, which is, uh, so this is, again, I'm, I'm always, I always like to take references. Right. So that we can, we can kind of get an idea of what it, what it, what the web says it is, and then what we say it is, right? right? Yes. So yeah. the, the, the Illuminati is a given name to several groups, both real and fictitious. Historically, the name usually refers to the Bavarian Illuminati, um, an Enlightenment-era secret society founded in 1776. Oh, wow. Same year as the United yeah. States? Yeah. In Bavaria, though, today part of Germany. The society's stated goals were to oppose superstition, obscurantism, religious influence over public life, and abuses of state power. Sounds great. Sounds great. <laughs> yeah. Let's go. Uh, uh, the order of the day. Okay, well, let's let's go to. Um, it attracted literary men such as uh, Johann Wolfgang von Goethe and Johann. Um, all these dudes I haven't heard of, but um, I should probably know who these guys are. But yeah. Um, but modern Illuminati. Several recent and present day fraternal organizations claim to be descended from the original Bavarian Illuminati and openly use the name Illuminati. Some of these groups use variation 
on the name the Illuminati Order in the name of their own organizations, while others, such as the Order Templi Orientis, have Illuminati as a grade within their organization's hierarchy. So uh, what, is, what is your thoughts on what, what is the Illuminati today, and how do they work? How are they involved? I believe um, the Illuminati has become kind of like a blanket. You kind of just kind of like the matrix or the deep state They're the Illuminati. So it's an allegory. Yes. It's allegory. an allegory. And so just to be clear, you're using this allegorically. Correct. Right yeah. now. Yeah. And, and I believe that, you know, uh, Jay-Z, Beyonce, Illuminati, um, you know, Lady Gaga, Illuminati. Well, why, but why them? Well, Jay-Z had, you know, he named his, his label, uh, Rockefeller records after the Rockefeller family, which yeah. people have associated with Illuminati, Freemasonry. Right. Um, um, you know, Hove calls himself Hove, Jehovah, Jehovah, Hova, Hova. Yeah. They throw up the pyramid with the eye. Um, so people, Jehovah just means God though, doesn't it? Right. Yeah. Right. So kind of like this sense that he is kind of, um, an antichrist type, type figure oh, or an embodiment his... of Jehovah or something. Oh, along well, the is lines. he using it satirically or is he using it? <laughs> it's up know. to interpretation. Yeah, I, so. I mean, yeah. um, you know, a lot of people take issue with that, even if it is satirical, satirical. Or, or literal, right? Correct. Right. Yes. Yeah. Right. Either so, way. you know, there's, so there's that broad blanket of Illuminati, but then again, I believe that there's also legitimate Illuminati groups, um, that have, uh, maintained their secret kind of code of life. And, um, and I believe that, that, you know, they do business with other members of these groups that yeah. they have a centralized plan and order that might span over a hundred years, a thousand years, and, and that they work together to accomplish these goals and that these goals and these relationships are hidden from the public. Um, I believe Freemasonry, which was big in the United States, all of the founding fathers were Freemasons. If you look at the grid and the outline of Washington, D.C., you see uh, Masonic symbolism all over um, the way that the buildings are shaped. Um, and I believe that, that these kinds of groups were, were perfect kind of uh, groups to be infiltrated by the Illuminati because they already had this level of secrecy and this bondship. And, and, but um, but you see, I don't that See, that sounds conspiracy theory to me. Right. And, but... Uh, I don't disagree with you, though. Sorry to interrupt. No. I, I think that there is, but I, I don't think it's it, it's as calculated as you, as you, we can talk about the World Economic Forum in, in a second. Right. But 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 as far as a lot of people in power, because my wife's dad has similar views to you. You guys should talk. You guys should. Okay. <laughs> um, if I had him on this. We, he, I we never used the term Illuminati, by the way. Yeah, yeah, no, you I know. know. But I think it's more of like a blackmail operation than, than, than or, or people who have money, right? Who have power. Like you think about the largest, you know, the black rocks and, or black stones, yes. black rocks, sorry. Um, these large companies who own billions and, or trillions of dollars right. of, of investments that have insane amounts of power, like Soros and stuff like that. Yes. Um, they are advancing their own interests, right? Correct. And so, it's, I don't think, I think labeling it as the Illuminati gives people the impression that it's this conspiracy of like these guys in hoods who will get together to see how can we take over the world? Kind of like you've seen James Bond movies and stuff. Right. But I think what, what it's more like, it's, it's guys going to uh, benefit meetings and then shaking Bilderberger group meetings. <laughs> I don't know what that is. That's where they all meet every year. <laughs> it's out in the open. And, okay. Yeah. yeah. So they go, they go to these meetings. Bohemian and, Grove. Is that what it is? That's another one in, 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 location? in the west of the United States yeah, where these so, leaders go and have these kinds of so, ceremonies or so th or even just conferences. You could right. call them conferences where they talk about the future way and, that they can help each other benefit for a common goal. Right. Whether that's getting more money or right. more power. And I think the, that the release of uh, viruses. No, I'm joking. <laughs> JK. Yeah. Uh, no, yeah. I apologize. We're on YouTube. <laughs> I know, right? Seriously. Yeah. It's, that was it's, a joke. Um, but but I think that everybody's trying to look out for their own best interest, but people who are in positions of power bring that to another level because, right. I mean, some of the stuff that I've heard Soros say about him fancying himself, or a, fancying himself akin to a god, which right. is from a 1990s uh, interview that he, that he did. Um, um, Patrick Bet David covered this recently on, on his channel, but, um, you know, when you have this constant urge and need for more power, more money... And then you, you do, well, how can, what, what, how can I influence? So it's a level of ambition that is just 
so high beyond and then your average person's level of ambition. Um, I think we all have ambitions. I, I think these are to a perverse level. Like Correct. for example, uh, anything in moderation or balance is good, right? Exercise is good. Right. If you start taking steroids and get ginormous and then you take too much and then you have a heart attack, whatever, the, again, it's the fine line balance. between how, how far you take it. And I think that um, these uh, th these people in positions of power are their their perception of what life is and what ambition is and what purpose is is in my opinion and I'm generalizing here but right. is skewed people who want to really mold the population to a certain thing or think that they can control population with one they, they and they may very well be able to but the right. fact that people are thinking that in the first place Correct. is so perverse to me yes it's so just disturbing yes um so yeah I, I don't disagree that there are people out there that that have that motivation to to do those kinds of things for right. sure yeah and i believe that that you know i'm kind of speaking with a with a broad brush again you know but but the illuminati to think that there's one group called the illuminati everyone's a member of this and there's a central goal and everyone's just gets along and buddy, buddy and the Illuminati. I don't believe it's like that at all. You know, yeah. you watch kind of like vampire movies or things like that. You see these ancient families from different areas. And although they work together when shit hits the fan, yeah, right. They are always bickering and fighting competing. amongst themselves because these different kind of, well, they're competing for power, Correct. right? They're all, they're all in power. They're all in yep. heightened positions of power, yep. but they also want to compete, but not step on each other's toes. Correct. And much. I believe it's more of a situation like that. Yeah, exactly. So again, we're using the term Illuminati right. um, allegorically. Correct. I think a lot of these people too, are, that are in these positions of power are, are extremely smart. Right. Some of the smartest people on earth, right? Like, of course. You know, but, but that doesn't mean anything, right? Yeah. And, and, <laughs> and you were talking about these people's lofty ambitions to, to do things like control population, right? And, and that, you know, that's, that's kind of strange and scary but when you have families that have generation after generation after generation of shared lofty goals yeah these are kinds of the it's the norm for them yes and these are the kind of the the quote unquote illuminati type families right. where yeah. it's it's so focused and um you know it's a, it's a lineage by being born into the family right. your path is already chosen it's like a lineage of of um of wealth of um What's the, a privilege, but to a to a level like beyond it, what we can. And I believe, can, and 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 I believe, the majority of these people, maybe not even by their own fault, do not see the rest of humanity as their equals. So right. they believe that they do have this kind of divine right to decide, kind of well, the yeah, outcome. I, I, I think outside so. I, of free and fair I, elections. I think that's fair to say. I think the same reason why, and even people who weren't born into that, you take like, um, you know, actors, right? You know, actors who who came from nothing, and then. Yeah. They 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 get this god complex because the Hollywood phenomenon. Yeah, they, exactly. They they become famous. People mm -hmm. love them. They're like, oh, I can get away with anything, you know. And 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 for many years they have been able to. Yeah. Well, not just that, but like just being get away with being a, a, a shitty person. Absolutely. You know what I mean? And um and you know a lot of people don't have that. You know, they lose sight of those those boundaries that right. they should have been taught, or even if they were taught, they just say screw it because as people we. You know, maybe subconsciously, you know, want power. You that's know what right. I mean? So, um, so yeah. I think I that's a survival thing in our DNA. I think that that you are probably onto something with that. You yeah, know, we like, strive to be powerful because that means that we, us and our survival. families, will survive. Yeah, totally. Yeah, and and how far you take it. I right. mean, the same thing with money and affluence. You know, money today is the equivalent of how strong and of a club you have. Right. You know, and how how much can you protect your your tribe or whatever. So, um, you know, a lot of people define. Uh, wealth as a in, as a sign of, of power and wealth as a sign of success, which it can be right. uh, if that's how you define it as. But again, it's about that balance, right? right. Um, so, so obviously, like, do you, are you, do you think the term conspiracy theorist is a negative, has a negative connotation? Like if you say, like if I were to title, I interview a conspiracy theorist, would that be? It is my understanding that the term conspiracy theory was created after the JFK assassination to kind of villainize or humiliate people who were questioning the mainstream narrative. In that sense, um, you know, I believe that there is a, a, a purposeful kind of attack 
on that word and they do right. use it's that used word. in a negative connotation. Alex Jones is a conspiracy theorist. Now he has a right to be silenced and cut off all media because he's a conspiracy theorist. Right. Um, I think right. it's something like that. Yeah, and, and it's used as a kind of a bait to, or as a, as a way to be able to get to, to silence people and say, Correct. oh, because he's a conspiracy theorist. Right. But again, I, I don't think regardless of how much of a conspiracy theorist or how heinous the stuff he says is or people say are should be right. a, 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 a means for them to be silenced, it's, right? It's, it's another I, listen, means to I, an end for them I don't to like, take away rights. I, I, I do not like Alex Jones. Yeah. I, I don't like Trump per se. Mm-hmm. I don't like I don't like him as a person at all. Maybe his right. policies, but as a person... Uh, I, I could not watch. I, I can't watch Biden give a speech. I cannot watch Trump right. give a speech. I cringe when I hear either of them speak because of yep. how just how unable they are to form articulate sentences. And right. um, now that's not to say you have to have the gift of the silver tongue in order right. to be a, a leader, but it helps to be able to communicate your thoughts clearly, succinctly, without getting too emotional about things and keeping a level head and keeping staying moderate in your views. And so I think that uh, regardless of how uh, how badly say Trump rubs me, how wrong, rub, wrongly he rubs me. Uh, that's that's kind of <laughs> dirty. <laughs> but I definitely don't think that anything that he says should, he should be silenced. Right. And, and so he's been, you know, the indictments right. are kind of an example. Like he's CIA just, or I don't know if it was the CIA, but the government just got access to his Twitter. Elon was fined for not handing over information. And then finally, after some fines was given over to them, and, um, you know, they're going to be using not only his tweets, his messages and his tweet drafts now as evidence against him. Well, and, and that's that's the problem for me is that let's tweet say, drafts. So a thought, not even something that, you know, he, he, you, 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 you write a thought down. You don't post it. You're not committing a crime, but you're thinking it now. Now that's going to be used as Are evidence. Are thought. That's Think like about the, how far it's gone. Well, that's 19. That's George Orwell. That's, exactly. That's the thought police. Exactly. That, See, this is that never ending stop sign at the yeah, end of the road right it's they like keep that, moving that it moving slippery it. slope right um yeah listen even if he doesn't get jail time mm-hmm. right if he gets out gets off it doesn't matter like there's more than enough ammunition now for the democrats or other republicans running against him to use against him from these indictments all right. this evidence is gonna be made public because i'm sure the media will be fine with making it all public right, right? um and will be will will be used against him. Now, I'm not saying I, I I can't make the conjecture that it is a happy coincidence that hey he's running for ele- he's running for election reelection uh you know next year, um and this is why this is happening. Um, it's it, it's conjecture, but it's 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 a happy coincidence to say the least. And so it seems interesting that all this is happening at that same time. And um, or it is election interference. Or yeah, um and and yeah exactly and and. Trying to, I mean, you again, trying to prove that again, it's just, it's just, it's mess. It's crazy to me, man. All this is, is insane. Now, it, listen, if somebody commits crimes, they should be held liable. If they, they, if they committed crimes, I don't care if it's Biden. I don't care if it's Trump. And again, I am not a lawyer. I know I have, I have common sense, but I, 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 and if a law is broken, trying to prove some of the things that he's being indicted for is pretty seems very hard to be able to prove that you incited certain things to happen right or um what happened in in georgia with the, uh, the evidence uh you know uh what's the word yeah I, the rico I, I, charges yeah the rico charges i think i think him calling up um people of power and like saying hey you better get me that one it's the stupidest thing trump could do like can you find me yeah <laughs> what's that he said can you find me is that what he are said? you sure you've checked everything yeah basically he yeah. wasn't saying create Right, but here's the thing, like, I understand what you're saying. Like, just stop doing stupid shit. Yeah, you know what I mean. Like, unless it was a trap. It's a, uh, listen. I'm my conspiracy theorist. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm keeping my mind open. Right, but but the stuff I, I wouldn't put it past him because he's said a lot. He's he his filter is is none. Right, and I think listen. I think it's good to have a filter, and I think it's good to speak up when you have. You have to pick your battles, and right. Knowing- and, and the things that you're that you're being critical of him are some of the things that have made him who he is. So it does come with pros and cons. That no filter where he just throws out there. I think that's why so many people have 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 come to love him as well. Right, uh, but yeah, I guess. Yeah, I, there's a lot. There's a there's a there's other there's other Republican candidates that I would much rather see as president than Trump. Vivek. 
Vivek for sure. Love him. Yeah, dude. Ramaswamy is awesome. Yeah. We're going to talk about him in a minute, but I definitely actually let's talk about him now. So he's a uh, He's running for uh, he's running for president, and the dude has been everywhere. He has, dude. He's been on. He's every, doing podcasts. He's on podcasts. That's why I'm doing this. RFK yeah. is doing podcasts. Right. My two favorite well, candidates RFK, right now. I know, and it's so funny. And yeah. I, the, the, I actually literally have them in our notes to talk. One's about. One's a Democrat. One's a public Republican. How, how crazy perfect, is that? How perfect is and that? And those are my two favorite. So outside of Trump, I'm being completely honest here. Really? Yeah. yeah. Well, I hope you vote for Ramaswamy yeah. over over Trump. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. If we can be honest, uh, with, with the, the, Trump is so far ahead of everyone. I do not foresee any situation where he's not the nominee unless they use the the indictments against him. Right. And, and uh, well, you saw where Ramaswamy was three months ago, and you see where he is now. It's right. Insane. And you see he's, where Trump was three months ago, and see where he is now. He's he's just every time he's indicted, his numbers go up. Wow. That's crazy. His base is growing because of the indictments because now they've made him the underdog. Yeah. And people always root for the underdog. It's crazy, the whole Trump obsession phenomenon. Mm -hmm. And it's not just with Republicans who are obsessed with Trump. And I say obsessed because they literally, there are some people who are obsessed with him to a point where like, dude, it's a dude, it's a guy. Yeah. But take my, um, my dad, who is a d Democrat who hates Trump, or um, Carla's great uncle, Democrat who hates Trump. Like half of their posts on Facebook is literally about how bad of a Trump a person Trump is. They literally are consumed right. with beating this guy's name into the ground, which is hilarious because it's like he is one so polarized. He is so loved by us, by some and so hated by right. others. And 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 some, you know, on on on, le on the left, think of him, compare him to a Hitler, which right. is crazy to me. He's definitely uh, not. He's definitely not. But people do. And right. do, again, I can't say enough that how how much I dislike Trump because right. I do not like him right. but his policies I like there you I go. don't like him as a person I like his policies but right. that's where Vivek comes into play right he's Trump 2.0 he's in my opinion he's much more articulate than Trump he has the exact same policies as Trump the exact same policies yes. as Trump he is why is Vivek not a racist <laughs> you see <laughs> what I'm saying yeah oh oh because of his skin color you think well no I think it's just because well, he's he's he's, he's a small not the threat. Yet. He's a small fry yeah. right now. Uh, you're yeah. right. You're right. So and, and so we know that that the uh, you know using um, you know what's the word um, identity politics is something that's been used right. to in order to 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 curb or curtail the movement or the advance of the pro the progress of of political candidates for sure. Um, but the Vex standpoints are for one for one he's really smart, very smart right. guy. It, the speed at which thoughts come out of his mouth is akin to like, uh, who's the, um, who's the, the, I can't, I can't believe I'm forgetting his name. Smart lawyer, Jewish guy who I love, uh, my brother, uh, daily wire owner of the daily wire Shapiro. Got it. Ben Shapiro. The thoughts just come quick. out of the, come out of their heads quick. Yeah. Um, but, um, he, his policies are, are really what I, I, I like a lot. I think that, um, Let's see, um, where was it? Um, Vivex sound bites. And I say sound bites because everybody's got a sound bite, right? So these are his, what we call his truths, right? He's got 10 truths. Uh, one, God is real. We're going to talk about each one. One, God is real. Two, there are two genders. I don't see it. Those first two seem like, again. He's speaking like, to his base. Yeah, exactly. I don't like that. It's pan it seems pandering yeah. to me. That's one thing I don't well, like. You just said he was brilliant. Well, he's smart, but, <laughs> but again, any Republican, anybody, it's yeah. marketing at the end of the day, yeah. too. You're marketing. Three, human flourishing requires fossil fuels. Reverse racism is racism. An open border is no border. Parents determine the education of their children. The nuclear family is the greatest form of governance known to mankind. Capitalism lifts people up from poverty. There are three branches of the U.S. government, not four. Uh, I don't know if he's referring to the FBI or something. I don't Maybe know what, the intelligence or the, or yeah, the media sure. or something. We'll see what that means. And the U.S. Constitution is the strongest guarant guarantor of freedoms in history. So these are just what his truths are. Um, you know, a lot of Republicans go on the whole God thing. Mm -hmm. um, Vivek is Hindu. Correct. Um, you know, you can be Christian, whatever. Uh, my thought is, w <laughs> I never quite resonated with that with that phrase that god is real and and because i think you can be a secular person and be extremely uh, and follow the rule of the land and the golden rule and not need the idea of knowing that god is real in order to live a very happy and fulfilling life don't get me wrong i like to believe in 
in God and in afterlife, I would probably be a lot more peaceful, but I can't wrap my head around that, that, that idea, you know, like my daughter, Ellie, who's, uh, six is, you know, asking about whether, you know, whether or not God is real and about heaven and stuff after you die. And, you know, we tell her that people, some people do believe it and some people don't. And I would much rather be the person that lets her, that wants her to believe that it is real. Right. Um, unfortunately, you know, I, I myself can't, but the true, the idea that God is real and how that is entwined into, uh, the politics and the political campaign specifically of the Republican. What, what is that? You know? Um, I believe that like you said, the majority of people, if they don't already believe in God, want to believe in God. Right. And I think that a belief in God and a belief in values and morals, you know, be it Christian or be it, you know, Hindu, right. right? Um, they help create a society that is more, I was going to say free and open some parts of the world. It's the reverse, you know? Right, right. Um, I think that it's just, it, you know, it's, it, it, it's take, for instance, you said someone that doesn't believe in God, they believe in the rule of man and they follow all the laws or whatever. Well, right. what if the laws changed and what now, you know, now what if we get some, some people that, that don't have the best interest for society and humanity and government and they change the laws and now things, you know, that maybe shouldn't be legal or now legal, right? Right. Uh, uh, it's going to be that extra layer that's going to, to keep them uh, in, in that sense of, of not doing wrong unto others, doing right unto others. I believe that it's, it's a, it's a stronger reinforcement yeah. um, than, than anything that could be created by man. Um, yeah. But like you just said, people distort the, the religion, people distort right. the Bible, they distort the Quran, they distort, yep. you know, so they distort the Torah. It's, so it, it's, uh, it can go either way too with religion. Right. I, I think anything, cause absolutely re religion. Once uh, it's touched by man. Right. So, and, and so I, I have a problem with the whole God is real. I, I don't think, I, I just don't know if it necessarily needs to be in there again. That's just the platform of the Republican party. Right. And with the, what's funny is that it's just so, so again, polarized from the left, which is the opposite. You know what I'm saying? It just seems so strange that there isn't some, I just wish that, that, that take, I, I just take, wish that, that more moderate people. Right. And I wish that political, and I guess, I don't know if it has to be this way that, that the right has to say God is real. And then the left has to say, no, there's, you know, like, I, I, I don't but look at where an absence of God takes people as a society. You can look at groups of people that, that, that denounce God and you can see how far they're willing to push secular things. I don't know, man. I, I, I think if you look in history, if you look at history, you have, you know, pagans who had extremely, who had great, the Egyptians had amazing society. The Greeks had amazing society. And their definition of God all differs from one another. Right. Their your your God is not real, but my God is real. And I think a belief in God is more important. But but what is that? Something bigger than you, or it's just putting a hierarchy to humanity. But but unless you're going by the teachings of said book of the Bible or whatever, because uh, you know you there's a natural hierarchy on Earth. There's plants. There's insects. There's animals, there's humans, right? Right. If we're the end of that, then we are God. We become God. If we're not the end of that, then that puts us in harmony with the rest of earth. You're saying it's a means to take our, check our ego? Maybe. I think it creates more of a balance in, in nature. Yeah. Um, and then, okay, so going on to number two, there are two genders. Again, something that's very, that's, that, that's clearly written there to like, you know, Right. Kind of polarize again. Um, but listen, I wanted to come to Vivex to talk about actually what I do like about him. Cause I think, yeah. I, I think no, nobody is beyond reproach. No matter how, right. I like, how much I like a candidate, nobody's perfect. Right. It's like, and we he have does to be have realistic. The, the world economic forum ties where he was named one of the young leaders and oh, he's he on was. their website. He was, yeah. Oh, I did and not, he's I, become a billionaire through pharmaceuticals. Yeah. So it, there's a lot of red flags with Vivek. He right. came out of nowhere. But again, and again, the pharmaceutical companies for all the, all the Viox, Vioxx is an opiate, you know, drugs that have come out that have, that have been devastating for people. Excuse me. There've been a lot of also good that have come from, right. from it. And, and a lot of death trying vaccines on, on babies from prisoners, trying vaccines on poor uh, countries, populations that they knew were infected to see the results of these things. A lot of evil comes from him as well. Where, where, where's that? Where you heard, where'd you, where you heard that? <laughs> So there was uh, the, uh, I'll have to pull up the link um, or send you the link. Maybe you do you put links and stuff in yeah, the, yeah, in, yeah. I'll, I'll, I'll send you a link here. to put yeah. in the description, but I was watching an interview and it was 
uh, ex VP or or he was under oath. Uh, he was getting what is it when you when you're when the lawyers speak to you before you go to trial? Uh, deposition. He was being, he was under deposition, yeah. and they asked him, you know, have you ever tried vaccines on children of women who are in prison? He says, is yes. Have you tried vaccines on, you know, used them as basically using people as test dummies without their consent or unknowingly. Well, we know and that that's the- under record. And then you look at like, say Bauer, for instance, when they gave out all of the, the, um, and this is, you know, this is public record as well. They, they went to trial. They had to pay all this off. They were giving HIV infected vaccines to populations in other countries. And they went to trial, they lost trial, they paid it out. So these companies, it's, it's kind of like a greater good type acceptance of their failures because they're doing more good than bad. It's kind of like... Uh, you just well, have to put it in perspective is all I'm saying. Kind of like MK Ultra, right? When that, when that was used... Uh, and yeah, that's openly used. Uh, Operation Mockingbird, you know, where, where the, the CIA can now legally prop, prop, you know, put propaganda into our media. You know, these things are real. Operation Mockingbird. I've never heard of this. Operation Mockingbird. Is a alleged large-scale program... Operation Mockingbird is an alleged large-scale program of the United States Central Intelligence Agency that began in the early years of the Cold War and attempted to manipulate domestic American news media organizations for propaganda purposes. According to author Deborah Davis, Operation Mockingbird recruited uh, leading American journalists into a propaganda network and influenced the operations of front groups. CIA support of front groups was exposed when, when an April 1967 Ramparts article reported at the National Student Association, uh, received funding from the CIA. In 1975, Church Committee congressional investigations revealed agency connections with journalistic and civic groups. Um, interesting. I never heard of that before. Um, so yeah. So um, I think um, I think yeah. He's got some. He's he's definitely got some 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 ties to. That's the thing, and and time will tell. You know, right. Right now, he seems like a genuine guy, and uh, who, you know who who's who's. He says all the right things. He, yeah, exactly, and you know, very well spoken, exactly. very intelligent. So so based on his what his policies are, because I think that's something that that most people you know want to know, right? Like what what his policies are. Um. So his first, what he calls his first two point Vivex policy commitments to take America first. Further than Trump. Oh, he, he, look at that. On he said he website. would pardon Trump, and not only would he pardon him, he would have him advise him because he said he wants to start at the principles of, like you said, the policies, yeah. learn from what Trump did wrong, all the mistakes that he made, and continue his policies under new management, basically. They were trying to, you know, they're asking everyone right now if they would pardon Trump or not if he was indicted. And that's just one of the questions that they're asking all of the um, you know, potential Republican candidates. But like you said, you know, his, his, um, he's, he's mimicking that policy, which, which is making a lot of people um, lean towards him, you know, because they look at kind of, you know, the success the country has had in the past four years. And they look at the success the country had in the previous administration and right. it, it brings back good memories, you know? Right. So number one, revive American national identity. And this is something he spoke about that I felt was, uh, I, I resonated, resonated with the fact Absolutely. that the fact that so many people look on, on social media and say like, you know, screw the U S right. America and making fun of us on social media. It's like, yes, this is like, I've been, I've lived in a lot of countries. Right. All right. Um, and, um, people just don't talk about it because America is, scr- is scrutinized as such a, a racist country, right. but America is like the best country to live in. Absolutely. If you want freedom and equality, like, it, it, it is the least racist country on earth. And that's not to say that things can't be improved. And that there's but, not racist people here. Right. They're, they're always going to be. There's never going to be Absolutely. a mag- magical population of no crime and, and no, no right. bad people. But it says here, uh, revive the American national identity. Use the military, including drones, to secure our southern border. End affirmative action. Repeat, uh, repeal Lyndon Johnson executive order. Protect American children. Ban addictive social media under age 16. Wow. Mm. Wow. And gender confusion care for minors. Make political expression a civil right and end unlawful DEI indoctrination. Do you know what DEI stands for? What the hell is DEI? I have to look that up. Um, let me see if I can find that. What is DEI? What is the... And, and just correct me on my pronunciation, Vivek. Vivek, yeah, yeah, yeah. Got it. 
Oh, diversity, equity, and inclusion. Absolutely. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, <coughs> excuse me. And then, um, what else? Sorry, I've got like five freaking tabs open. With withhold federal, sorry, withhold federal funding for cities that refuse to protect Americans from violent crime. For cities that refuse to protect. Where the DAs are not enforcing crimes. Right, I see. Yeah, I, I think that, I, one thing that I, he spoke about that he's not getting into here that he's gotten in, in with all of his uh, debate or all of his interviews is merit-based immigration. And I think it's right. the greatest thing. Somebody coming into the country who wants to be here, but is also very well qualified to help contribute to the society. Because right. when you think about why, you know, why you'd want someone into your country, if you were like the ruler of a country, <laughs> why you'd want somebody in the country is to help the country flourish in one right. way or another, bring something to the country that will help it grow. Absolutely. Right. So I think, and, and prioritizing this merit-based society over just the way it is now, which he wants to get rid of, which is just like a lottery where it's just right. like your lottery, you win it and no, and then your entire family gets to come along with you for the ride. You know what I'm saying? Um, so in my opinion, which is great, I think, I think that, um, I mean, you know, discrediting people that want to, that want to be in the States that, that are, you know, listen, there's, the, the, there's a lot of, the rest of the world can be a shitty place, right? Right financially or from law perspective, however their laws are being dictated to where they, you know, they're, infi they're, they're starving, they're hungry. They, they, they can't, they, they don't know how to feed. They can't feed their kids. Like, don't get me wrong. I would, I would hate, you know, we lucked out. We won the genetic lottery when we were born in the States. Right. Right. But we can't bring the entire world into the country. Right. It's like, it's, it's a hard truth and it's, it's a shitty truth to, to have to acknowledge, but there has to be some rule of law. It has to be there, right? Like, do you remember 2016, uh, Hillary and Trump became nominees. Nobody liked either of them. They wanted somebody else. So these third party candidates kind of became a little popular. Do you remember Gary Johnson? The oh yeah, yeah, for sure. And do you yeah. remember, do you remember what he, his immigration stance was? Uh -uh. He wanted to make it much easier to get work visas. So you come to the United States, you want to work in the United States, you can sign up, get everything taken, work, and then based off merits, how you know, you don't get arrested, you pay your taxes, you uh, become proficient in, in American, um, um, you know, uh, culture. Yeah. Um, and then you can be rewarded after so many years with citizenship. I like that idea. So g piggybacking on that, because Vivek mentioned this is the whole work visa thing though, based on some of the laws when people come in on work visas, they're already, or they come in through the lottery They're um, they're given a job, right. but they, they're tied to that job and they're right. tied to that. And I think there's something a little bad about that. Right. I, I, I listen, if the, the, the problem is, is if we are able to accommodate and I don't know if this is the case, but let's just say the criteria for uh, somebody to come in the country as a prime candidate, as as Vivek wants, is somebody who's educated and stuff. Do they necessarily want to come to the states? I don't right. know. You know what I'm saying? If they have the if they've had the opportunity and the privilege to be educated and have something to bring to the country, you know, because the idea of America is something where you where you build where you build yourself, right? Where right. you don't have any opportunities in whatever country, you don't have the opportunity to get an education because it's not there for you, but you want to come because you know that you can get it there. That's why I also think this could be a problem because right. if, if he wants merit based, but you can't reach anything of merit in the country that you're from, then who knows if, if that's, if that's the right thing. Also, who knows now there may be thousands or hundreds of thousands of people who have an education, who have that desire and are smart and have that merit and want to come, then in that case, then yes, it would be great to have those types of people in the country to help right. advance the country. I just don't know if that's realistic uh, based on so many stories that I've that I've heard. Like he, his parents were immigrants. I don't know how well educated they were, how established they were, but it would be interesting to know where they were and to see if they would have passed. I think the he court. talked about his father uh, getting his master's or doctorate later in life. So he right. was educated. He was college college education and got his uh, uh, upper degrees later in life. I see. My fear with this is is you know. Um, is that there is there is hundreds of thousands of people who have no opportunity to be educated, right? Who would be a, amazing American citizens, right? And and um, you know they are penalized 
because they of would a be few, penalized. They would be penalized under this, yeah. but they're also currently penalized because of of bad apples, you know. Right. And a lot of people paint immigration with a broad brush. Right. Um, you know, and, um, it's just when you're saying you have to be educated, you have to do this or whatever, you know, I think that there could be some other type merits or, or, um, you know, ways that through like, kind of like aptitude or psychological, visa something and then psychological some, yeah. testing and, oh yeah, work visas to see how they work and yes. then reassess. Yeah. Yes. You know, but, but, I uh, um, agreed, you know, America was not built. The idea of America was created by educated people, right? But America was not built by educated people. Very well said. True. Yeah. Yeah. And I think that, um, America was built by immigrants. Yeah, it is. Yeah, absolutely. And so, um, I, I think strengthening the law, the strengthening the border, I believe there does have to be an enforceable law and there does need to be a reliable system where people clearly know the how, process. Exactly. The process that you use to get into the country, right? Like yes. if the, it, it, let's just say hypothetically, there was this giant wall that nobody could get over across the entire border. Right. And you can only get in legally. Then at that point, right, notwithstanding having to deal with all the illegal entries, there are no illegal entries in right. this utopia that I'm that I'm contriving right now. And the only the only way at this point now is managing the bureaucracy of how to let them in. And right. this is a slippery slope. This is where, like you said, like I said earlier, if you let somebody in with a work visa, but that needs to be reassessed in say six months and six months. And if they're doing well, maybe move them to a different company so they're not getting stuck right. with this company so that the the company the, the company may be able to get kickbacks. I, I, you know, don't give, you know, anything where third parties stand to gain financially from, right. from uh, people coming in through the, to the country as, as immigrants, right? Remove any possibility of lobbying. Right. Lobbying or just greed or, Correct. right, exactly. That's, that's, uh, again, good intentions always lead, can always lead to shit, right? Maybe this is where AI is going to help us. Yeah. Maybe we'll see. Or maybe with the AI. Or maybe yeah. AI's demons. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, the other thing that um, he's got a lot of good policies, but I, I think one of the big ones that I think is probably the will be the most controversial ones is dismantling the FBI. Yes. So he's and I would take it a step further, dismantling the CIA, take J JFK the stance, you know, shatter the CIA into a million pieces and sh and scatter into the wind. Um, well, the idea was the. There was an intelligence agency that was created because of World War II, mm -hmm. and then once it was once World War II ended, it was dismantled, and then uh, then these then we had Russia, you know, mm -hmm. the USSR, and then oh, then the idea was oh, we need the CIA now to to start with this this Cold War intelligence this agency. So the idea is, I I, I think his I the Vex plan isn't to necessarily. It's to get rid of the FBI, but to repurpose it because right. he feels like there's a lot of redundancy. Overhaul it. Yeah, exactly. He's talking about removing, I don't know, a very large number of federal positions. 70,000 or, uh, yeah. Stripping thousand, it down. Yeah. And w which, you know, which is, you know. That's if, great. I, I mean, yeah. Not if you're one of the 70,000 that's working in there. And that's the thing. That 70,000 <laughs> is a lot of people and they have a lot of their own interest in mind. And I think yeah. that's something that they'd, they'd be really wanting to fight. Right. So, you know, when you when you have the, a hand in... Uh, in the, uh, the, the livelihood of so many people, you know, right. regardless of whether or not it's a good idea on paper, uh, if you're out of the job, you you're, like, help screw, you're like, screw this guy. You yeah. know what I mean? Like, I don't want, I'm not going to vote for this guy. I want my job. Right. right. Um, but, um, but if it has to be done, it just, has just, to be done. Just like the, the, at some point the dollar has to default. I mean, w w w you know, uh, at some point it has to be done and it's only going to be worse the longer we push it. Yeah. Right. I think the problem is, is the more money gets poured into the government, the more bureaucracy comes in, the more you have these institutions that feel like they are a necessity for the country to run. And right. I feel like there's so much, there is probably so much redundancy and so much red tape. I've seen a lot of interviews on uh, John Stossel is a great interview that I've read. I read a lot of his articles, John Stossel, you should check okay. him out. Uh, he's an independent journalist now, but he, uh, you know, the cost, he, he did a, an article over the cost of, or a video over the cost of public bathrooms in a public park versus private bathroom in a public, in a private park. And the cost between the two, the difference was magnanimous. It was like orders of like eight times. It was like a million dollars for this crappy public bathroom versus like 250,000 or less or a hundred thousand dollars for this public bathroom. It was, anyways, the quantities were huge. And again, it has to do with these bureaucratic 
steps to take in order to get something built. Right. And the emails, they have to go back and forth. And so the larger the body is, yes. the larger the, the, the system, the more bureaucratic and convoluted it becomes. Right. So I, you know, like I'm Twitter was. Well, yeah. And, and again, people listening who may be uh, funny how Twitter has become a political thing. Where right. If you are if you like Twitter, you're Republican. If you don't, if you right. like Elon Musk, you're a Republican. But I mean, it's still it's still up. Yes. It's still running. So listen, if it's running the same, regardless of what people's whether or not they're getting advertisers. Right. We're just talking facts. Facts. OK. Regardless of whether or not he's getting advertisers, because either people who are maybe more liberal or maybe just hesitant to spend money right. because they're afraid of what the public perception Correct. of. They don't want to be canceled. Ex- right. Exactly. Or exactly. They don't want to be canceled, lose money, whatever it is. They, they don't put their advertising dollars in, in X or Twitter. And so that's where, you know, Twitter's not generating as much money, but from a purely organizational functionality, and functionality standpoint, he was able to get rid of what per- a, Major, the majority Absolutely. of employees at the company and it's still at a rapid running, pace at a rapid pace and it's still working. Yes. So that goes to show like, I'm sorry, you, you can, can use that the, as an example for the hate, federal government. Exactly. You can hate the guy as much as you want. Whatever you think your stance on him is the fact that he was able to cut down costs and remove redundancies. Like I saw, I was at target the other day, a couple weeks ago and there was, um, there was a self checkout line and right. I hear somebody behind me saying, uh, so much for creating more jobs, all these, all these, you know, che- with, with, cause we're like, he's like, Oh, there's only two cashiers and all these checkout line, all these self checkout lines, so much for creating more jobs. And I wanted to turn to him. I'm like, are we still riding around on horses? dude? Uh, yeah. Like, like innovation happens. Yes. You have to adapt. Adapt. I'm sorry. Survival if is adapting. People are scared of robots. People are scared of robots yeah. coming in and taking all of our jobs. I've seen some funny videos on the internet of like robot deliveries going down like New York and everyone, when they see them, kick them over and start breaking them <laughs> and hitting them. It's in, the, it's innate in us to hate robots. They took our jobs. Yeah. Yeah. Man. It's a fear. It's real. Yeah. 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 I, I, I don't know. I, I think the, um, you, you have to, you have to roll with the punches, right. man. If, if I worked at Sony Music for um, from 2006 till 2010. Yep. Um, and this was with uh, the the age of the record business. You got me an internship C- there for that's, college. That's right. Yep. Uh, and um, I mean, I was on a di- I was on a sinking ship. Right. Uh, you know, and we were trying everything we could as best as possible to keep physical CDs alive and physical inventory. But at the end of the day, if it's the same thing with the horse bug year. You know, right. take the there the market for something will dwindle and go away as the market changes. And if you try to keep it the same, you are you are in, you are prohibiting innovation from right. happening. So um, I think which that, is bad for mankind. Exactly. So I, as bad as it is for these people, say at the FBI, to lose their jobs, if if they're redundant and if the, if it's just is able to run as well, and if it's saving the American people taxpayers money that could be spent on things that are more useful, like education, where I think there's not nearly enough money being. Spent or I don't want to say money, but it could be a combination of money and how well it is being right. allocated. Uh, you know, a lot of people shit on DeSantis and what he's doing, but the fact how he's allocating tax dollars for schools, yes. how you can take, I think it's a $5,000 credit. My sister lives in Florida right now. They go to, to a private Jewish school. Um, so, but they're able to get a five, I think it's a $5,000 credit. Don't quote me. If I, I could be right. wrong, but they can use that towards the school of their choice. Yep. So there's no more boundaries as to say, oh, I have to go to this school. I have to go to that school. People can choose the school they go to. Right. That is going to lead to innovation, competition, yes. because they're like, oh, I, I run this school, but they can go, there's a school next door. They can go there. Absolutely. That's going to make it run better. Instead so, of relying on the government right. for your funds. So regardless, again, on how people feel about the, the the again I'm not going to go over DeSantis's policies on that whole what do they call it the say the no gay bill or whatever the yeah. don't say gay bill I forget what it's called yeah but again we can we can go into that later I I have my own thoughts yeah. about that but regardless of that just that just the money just just in order to run things more efficiently at the end of the day for me that is probably the top of my list like I'm not uh, of what uh what my views on what a president should be what I'm looking for in a president, somebody who can make America more efficient, mm-hmm. who can make us sp- spend less on our tax mm-hmm. dollars so that we almost pay nothing in taxes. That'd be nice. Yes. <laughs> uh, Take government out of our lives. Yeah, exactly. Let us, let us, let me live my own life. Yeah. Um, I think you're going to see a huge shift from Connie and a lot of conservatives moving from DeSantis to Vivek here in the next few months as we approach. I think so. I think he's, he's 
ripping DeSantis apart and just his overall ability to connect with people. Yeah. And he comes across as much more intelligent. Yeah. And don't get me wrong, DeSantis is a super smart guy, but um, he's uh, he's he's not likable. He's kind of a goof. Yeah. Yeah. But um, but I mean, he's done a lot of great things financially for Florida. Great governor. Yeah. Um, so, um, let's see, um, speaking before we're talking about government overreach, right. And, and censorship. So, um, I mean, dude, I've got lots of stuff to, that I wanted to talk about, but like, like stuff in the media, for example, like, you know, the Hunter Biden laptop steel dossier, the Trump and diamond, all that stuff. But I, or Biden bringing $20 million in foreign, you know, foreign dollars and, 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 and us questioning that. But at the end of the day, that that's like the media side of things. And one, I'm so glad that big mainstream media is going to, is going down. I'm glad that independent medias such as, you know, like people are considering Joe Rogan to be a media outlet, yeah. which is crazy. But he's I, now being he's tagged not. as right wing. Isn't that just ridiculous? The place that we're in. Yeah. He's always yeah. been a Democrat. Do you know, uh, RFK is, is being considered a right wing and he's a Democrat running for the Democrat. He's Democrat. It makes no yeah. sense. It just gets ridiculous. Yeah. Who's, what's that? Uh, is it talking points? Um, on, on YouTube, it's, it's got that, uh, Charlie Kirk. No, no, not talk, No, that's, I think that's turning point. Turning basically. point. Um, Talking points. it's, uh, it's Crystal and Sager okay. and she's a Democrat and he's a Republican wow. and they are, they're independent journalists have a YouTube channel and they have very opposite stance on, on politician on politics, but they, they, that's have great. Their, it's great. Right. There's two yeah. opposite sides and they're and have they conversations like this. It's yeah. not hate. It's not, you know, it's just, yeah, exactly. And it's yeah. not like, you can't say this. You can't say this. Yeah. It's yeah. Like, yeah. Dude, say whatever you want. The, the fact that people, that, that that's come out, that, that to me is the biggest thing. So talking about censorship, yeah. the world economic forum, uh, recently came out with, um, uh, an amendment to a bill, the, uh, for France for internet censorship, um, from the, um, from the uh, legifrance.gouv, I'll say I'll read this in French. I'll, Absolutely, I, I won't read it in French. I'll re this is translated from the French. Yeah, um, good opportunity to practice your accent. I'll practice my French. No, but um, I'll, I'll read it. Apporter des protections nouvelles contre la désinformation et les intelligences et les ingérences étrangères provoquées par la diffusion des médias frappés par des sanctions. Uh, okay, so provide new protections against disinformation and foreign interference caused by the broadcast of sanctioned media. So again, a slippery slope, right? Uh, there was an article by uh, on Mozilla's Mozilla who owns Firefox, who makes Firefox, yes. uh, by their blog um, on their website, and uh, it's it's titled "France's browser-based website blocking proposal will set a disastrous precedent for the open internet." Yes. So, and I I just want to add that I believe it's Google that just came out and said that they are going to be re be removing all non-mainstream or alternative news sources from their search results. Oh, they are? You should look up on that. Wow. Yeah. And I don't know if they're saying they're going to do it or if it's already happened or this is an idea, but it's, okay. it's you know, public conversation now. I see. Um, Which sounds very similar. Um, and and it, at that case, people will start, people will find alternative browsers. Absolutely. I think people will go to DuckDuckGo. Or, We've been talking about YouTube. Look at Rumble, the right, competitor. Right. You know? It's, blow, it's They're blowing up too. Yeah, exactly. It, I go, I go to Rumble. I follow Badlands Media. There's about 20 different podcasts, different uh, uh, individuals. You might like some, might like other. They talk about how can, money. How they talk about company, aliens. They talk about news. How can a company and just... they have their own advertisers, and every show has their own advertisers, and these are people that... It, it, it's a second economy. Yeah, I know, but th th this is a problem. The pr this is a problem when you have two extremely opposing viewpoints... In, in the future, this is going to create this tribalistic, like really separative, uh, civil, like civil war style mentality. Like it's, it's a private company. And, and so I'm, again, I'm so glad that people can hate on Elon, but I'm so glad that he's not, he's not no longer going to be deleting people's accounts. The, right. If what you're saying is true about Google, that's, that's crazy to me. Yeah. Uh, in a well-intentioned and, and again, what's the line from Pulp Fiction that he takes from uh, the road to hell is paid with good intention, right? Yeah. Uh, wow. Get my Samuel L. Jackson line there. Yeah. In a well-intentioned yet dangerous move to fight fraud, online fraud, France is going, is on the verge of forcing browsers to create a dystopian technical, technical capability. Article six, paragraph two and three of the SREN bill would force browser providers to create the means to mandatory block websites present on a government provided list. This is fucked up. 
Such a move will overturn decades of established content moderation norms and provide a playbook for authoritarian governments that will easily negate the existence of censorship circumventation tools. Right. Uh, Why? History repeats itself. Why can't people see that this is not a good thing? Why? How can you, like, in a practical sense, we go back to defining what hate speech is. In a practical sense, trying to define that and trying to... Not define, but like I said, quantify that as to what what creates it. When does it become hateful? When does it become right. not? Like, is just beyond me. There should be a crime. If this X crime is created, these are the the terms. Define the crime specifically. Right. Tell me what it is, right? Yeah. Um, Throughout history, those that have been burning books were never on the right side of history. And this is basically a version of, a burning, version books, of, right? of burning books. Right. Controlling the narrative. Right. Or preventing people that you think are... Listen, preventing again, alternative narratives. Well, let's see. Well-intentioned. Mm-hmm. If you, in your, in the biggest, in your greatest heart of hearts, believe that you are correct in whatever conviction that you have, like, this is the truth. Green is this color that I'm holding in my hand. This, right. This object is green. No matter what, this is green. And then this guy over here comes in and is holding the same object and says, no, this object is red. I cannot curtail his ability to say that that thing is red if he wants to. I can say you're crazy. I yeah. can say, bro, this thing's or maybe green. Your you eyes blind? See it maybe, is red. maybe you see it as red, but I don't know what's wrong with you. Maybe yeah. you're colorblind, whatever. But I am not going to curtail his ability to speak. Right. Yes. Like that is the, it is like, it, it's. Nor are you going to allow his interpretation to change your interpretation. Right. Right. I, I, I am, I'm strong in my convictions. But right. you know what? Hey, dude. If you can somehow convince me that this thing yeah. is green, fair. I'll listen to you. Yeah. I'll, I'll try to listen to you. I'll, maybe you think you're crazy. I'll think you're crazy half the time, but maybe you'll get to me. Who knows? Yeah. So we'll see, man. Uh, but so again, this goes back to the censorship, which I thought, you know, and, and, you know, censorship during the pandemic when it came down to the science and efficacy of the vaccine, right? Anybody who questioned it, who questioned alternative means of treatment were labeled as misinformation spreaders. Ivermectin. Like, this is exact. So remember when, so Joe Rogan, he had that post on, on his Instagram. I was prescribed ivermectin from my doctor when I had as, COVID. As, as I was as well. And I got over it very quickly. So, you know, Joe Rogan takes it. He has a po- post, a post on Instagram. He's been, he's said this many times on his post that, you know, they put a CNN, put a filter on him to make him look all sickly, a yellow filter to make him look all diseased and stuff. And then Don Lemon on CNN and others ridiculed him as taking horse dewormer. But ivermectin won a Nobel Prize in 2015 for what it's done for disease in humans. And this is and just so just so I, again, I don't get deplatformed here. A study from an abstract from PubMed. And again, I, I preface this with. I am open to. Listening to other parts of science, meaning I am about to cite a study, but if I hear another study that contradicts this, my mind science is, contradicts itself quite often. Often, yes, I'm open to hearing it, but I'm, what I'm not open to hearing is you saying I cannot say Correct. this because of what I, what I'm saying. And that's, that's all it. it is. That's all it is. In the 2015, in 2015, the Nobel Committee for Physiology or Medicine, in it, uh, in its only award for treatments of infectious disease since six decades prior, that's a long time honored the discovery of ivermectin, a multifaceted drug, multifaceted drug deployed against some of the world's most devastating tropical diseases. Since March 2020, when ivermectin was first used against a new global scourge, COVID-19, more than, more than 20 randomized clinical trials have tracked such inpatient and outpatient treatments. Six of seven meta-analyses of ivermectin treatment, RCTs, that's randomly controlled trials, Reporting in 2021 found a notable reductions in COVID-19 fatalities with a mean 31% relative risk of mortality versus control. So now um, let's do rim disappear. <laughs> yeah. Again, well, so uh, and and then so you took um, you also got monoclonal antibodies, which and honestly, I probably would say that monoclonal antibodies were the majority of my improvement. You think so? I think so because I was. I was on ivermectin for several days, maybe seven days. Yeah. Uh, symptoms were getting worse the entire time. Are staying the same. They weren't getting worse. They're, I wasn't getting better. And just to be clear, this is anecdotal, okay? Yeah. Who, who knows what I was doing in my life and my body? Everybody's different. I took monoclonal antibodies within 24 hours. All symptoms were gone for good. Yeah. There you go. And and so, so 
I could immediately tell the difference. So the fact that, um, you know, that media and, you know, Don Lemon, people were criticizing this as, as being a dewormer when it's used in people across the world is disingenuous, disingenuous to the fullest. And it's just, right. it's just an example of how media can spin things to make things. And listen, I'm not saying that it's done on one side more than the other. It can be done. It's on the right. It's on the left. It's on all sides. People are trying to push their agenda. I think there are far, I think Breitbart is an example of, of a news media that I try to stick away from just because I've read a lot of their stuff. And a lot of times it's very biased and I try to stick with more moderate news, but it's hard to find it. It's really right. hard to find. I was reading a New York times article today on, um, I don't believe there is any unbiased DeSantis. news at this yeah. time. I, it, yeah, there's a few art. There's a actually there's a few uh, journalists. Think, maybe there's there's a website called I think it's one four four zero or okay. it's something. Dang it, I need to look it up. I, I follow them on Facebook, but they're basically uh, they they it's purely just fact. It's literally like bullet points versus like somebody decorating sentences with possible inherent biases behind them. So it seems quite very just straightforward. This this is what happened. These are the facts. Boom 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 boom, and that's it. Um, and, and then make up your own mind. These are the stats. You can decide what it is. Right. Um, but, um, I mean, yeah, Rogan felt great afterwards and, and, uh, you know, my, my doctor prescribed it to me, I felt better afterwards. So it goes to show you that, you know, and the CDC has now said doctors can prescribe it for COVID-19. But, but I thought that you couldn't prescribe something. If there was an alternative to COVID-19, you couldn't, I believe they are now allowed to prescribe it. Is so it, okay. I guess that's a kind uh, of, of, you know, backstepping in the sense that it does have benefits. Is it, are you sure of this? Or are you? I'm 90% sure of okay, this. Cool. <laughs> I'm not sure of anything, Pierre. Yeah. I don't know anything, dude. Yeah, Just... absolutely. <laughs> um, anything I say, do your own research. Obviously I'm just, you know. Yeah, exactly. That's, and that's the same with anybody. Yeah. And so, um, the, the last side of the coin as far as censorship. So I'm a big Jordan Peterson fan and he, uh, RFK who, uh, who anybody doesn't know is Robert F. Kennedy Jr. Who is the son of Robert Kennedy, who was his father was Bobby Kennedy, Bobby Kennedy, who was, who was shot. Sirhan Sirhan. Yep. Wow. Yep. Uh, I, I think I remember the actual shooting. Wasn't it on Forrest Gump where they actually showed that as well? Like the, 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 the it might've been a, a cut scene. Yeah. A cut scene from that. Yeah. He's like, Cause he's talking about like, when, when JFK is shaking his hand, he's like, how do you feel to be an all-American? Yeah. Like, I got to pee, you know? And then, and he goes, some years later, somebody shot that man's brother or shot him yeah. and his brother, right? Yeah. So anyways, uh, RFK and is the, the nephew of JFK. J RFK is the nephew of JFK. And, uh, he's the one who wrote the very controversial, but extremely successful and well-reviewed the real Anthony Fauci, yes. right? If you look it up on, on Amazon, which I haven't read, which I mean, I may, I may get to. But everywhere where he is, everywhere he's gone, he's been, um, especially on YouTube and other platforms, but especially YouTube, he has been deplatformed so many times. Um, and I, I, I would and love it's good to, to know preface that he is a Democrat to show that this isn't something that's only happening to one side or the other. Right. It's happening to anyone that goes against the mainstream narrative. Right. Exactly. Very good. Very well said. It's true. It's, it's, it, it, it and he, in a lot of his statements about the what 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 vaccines have done, um, partially from what he claims is the content of mercury. That's part of you know the content. And and again, uh, you know he. I'm, I'm assuming that he's been deplatformed because of the possible what they consider to be misinformation or disinformation or not not speaking truth. Now again, we all have a personal responsibility to go and research things that we, and I'm not taking everything as gospel. So, you know, for example, he said, uh, RFK said that uh, there were studies that showed no marked change or a difference in the blood of people after taking vaccines uh, that, that had mercury content in, in the early 90s and 80s. Um, and so it was essentially safe to use. But then when, uh, according to RFK, when the brains were, uh, um, geez, when autopsy, they, autopsy, yeah. postmortem, obviously, <laughs> uh, please, they were, please, they were quanti there was quantities of mercury in the brain, which right. caused lead, you know, this, this poisoning of it. So, you know, I, I'm not sure what he's been deplatformed. So, but, um, he has a very strong stance on 
vaccines. Yeah. He has, um, and I think if he came to the table with cited sources on his, whether it's his who, people who interview him, like uh, Robert John, uh, Peterson, and and listed those sources, it'd be a lot harder for, and unfortunately that's what you have to do. If you feel like it shouldn't have to be, you should be able to say whatever you want to say and that's it. But if you can right. at least back your sources up with the quotes, and hopefully I plan on doing this with this video. It makes it a lot that difficult say, for them for to them de-platform. To de-platform. Yeah. But so I, I just hope this guy is not uh, censored and people can hear what he has to say. And I think he's pulling it like 20%. In the he Democratic is. Party, which yeah. is very high. Yeah, I mean, when there's an incumbent president, who? I, but so on the Republican side, you've got Trump, you've got Vivek, you've got DeSantis. On the Democrat side, you've got RFK and Biden. The Biden administration has said they will not participate in any debates. Um, Biden administration said that there will be no candidates challenging him. So the fact that RFK is even challenging him is a step outside of what they're calling for. Wow. So that's why supposedly he was... Uh, there will anybody, be no debates. They're not giving challenging. him security, I've heard. I don't know if that's yeah, any true. Yeah, he's not getting yeah. any security. Which, which supposedly candidates are supposed to get yes. security. So uh, again, it's, it's a political kind of uh, dirty way of, of doing things. Again, everybody, it's... Yeah, again, people are fucked up, man. I'm telling yeah. you. Like, humanity in general, like these kinds of decisions that people make to, to make, make the playing field unfair is pretty insane to me. Uh, and, but, and if I'm misspeaking... Guys, please put it in the comments. Call me out because yeah. I'm just talking. Yeah, exactly. We're just shooting the shit. Yeah. Um, so um, RFK's standpoints um, on um, on um, or, or his policies, I'm not too clear on. Um, so uh, a lot of it seems a little bit more nebulous. Honest government. What does that mean? Yeah. Where the people, a democratic government is, uh, let's see, uh, here from the bottom paragraph of, of this website here. We are going to remake public institutions to serve the public. We will roll back the secrecy and make government transparent. We will protect whistleblowers and prosecute officials who abuse the public trust. We will rein in the lobbyists and slam shut the revolving door that shunts people from government agencies to lucrative positions in the companies they were supposed to regulate and back again. We will get money out of politics. We will open our institutions to real citizens' involvement. We will restore integrity to government. And if you watch his latest interview with Tucker Carlson, he very openly calls out the CIA's involvement in the murder of both his uncle and his father. So, and again, you know, who's to say that's not going to... And that's the thing. It's... Going back to conspiracy theories, I I don't know whether what what he's saying is true or not. Right? We we none of us can say that. It was like I was just watching the the on Netflix the Amber Heard and Johnny Depp case on Netflix. Did you see that? Yeah, it's such trash. Not on it's, Netflix, but yeah. I saw the clips while so it was happening. You should watch it on Netflix because it's a okay. documentary about it. But I call it what when I watch it, I'm like to Carl, I'm like you ready to watch our trash? I love it's like, it. I love it. It's trash, but it's I love to watch it. But when you when you take that back when you you know he won essentially but like he it was almost like a popularity contest it was and she, amber heard could have been right and truthful about half the things that happened she could have been truth rightful right about 100 things that happened 100% of the things that happened we don't know right we're never going to know right we might we might not but we're never going to know the truth only right. them, only them and god are going to know the truth correct um but his story is his story. There you go. I like that. And that's the same thing with, with, with this, the, with, um, with RFK. I, were they involved? Were they not? Again, not a means to be deplatformed if you say that. You have to do your research. Right. And, or, or say, see, for, for somebody to make claims like that that seem egregious, you have to be able to have a way to have some sort of proof for that. Right. Right. You have to, especially so if he's going on Tucker Carlson and he's saying these, he needs something to, right. to back it up. You can't just say, I believe. That's great that you do, but right. but expect people to say you're a conspiracy theorist and that you're not telling the truth, yes. right? You have to expect that. Sorry, it's just the way it works. Like you need some sort of proof, right? Right. So again, but again, not a means for censorship, but just a means for people to believe what you are. It shouldn't be a means that, that for him to be censored. Everyone should be able to vocalize what they believe. But that doesn't mean that you should be believed. It's up to you to convince other people. Right. 
uh, going back to Vivek, he's got uh, he also wants to set term limits on all on all um, positions of, of, of power within. Right. So limit it to eight years, sure. just like his uh, just like the president. Get rid of the career politicians. Yeah. Congressmen, yeah. I agree. It should be eight years, and, and yeah, that's make it, it yeah. more difficult to buy people every eight years, exactly. four years. Yeah, yeah exactly. not buy them for a lifetime with blackmail. Yep, yep, totally. Um, let's see. Um, yeah, man. Oh, one one other thing. Um, his energy standpoint too, Vivek's standpoint on energy. Um, I don't know if you're he. I don't know if you remember the um, the protests that were going on in Sweden. Right. Uh, remember when, about the the green energy or clean energy proposals that were they were trying to 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 give and the 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 farmers were protesting. Yes. Because of uh, the nitrogen fertilizer. Right. Are you familiar with the nitrogen fertilizer and its role? Go ahead. So, and this is something that I read that that, that I found interesting. Um, is um, nitrogen fertilizer is basically used or has been used to dramatically increase the rate at which we can um produce crops yield yield yeah like i don't know something large like 60 percent. don't quote me on that but a huge amount wow. so one of the reasons why we it expedites it 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 makes the the land fertile for stuff to grow okay and so um it is a type of fertilizer that just helps bad land grow good grow crops and right. w it's it's thanks to that that we've been able to get the world out of quote starvation right this mass production of food it's it's needed um and so part of this you know um carbon emissions or reduction of carbon emission plans talks about reducing that which would help feed people so it's like it's almost the idea of oh we're going to take away energy but we're not going to find a solution for it kind right. of a thing same thing with 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 uh with either you know with coal or different types of energy. Yes. It's like, I'm all for green energy, but if it's going to cause the price of energy to spike and people not Correct. get it, then that's a, that's a problem. That's going right. to, the reason why most societies have been able to get out of poverty is largely due to food mm -hmm. and energy, Correct. right? Having the energy, having the food. And so if you're going to increase the price and make it harder for developing countries like Africa, who's been, who's seen a massive in influx of growth because of those two factors, then it's counterproductive. Correct. Um, so nitrogen fertilizer is essentially, I mean, it, fossil fuels are required to make uh, ammonia. Um, so actually uh, ammonium sulfate in nitrogen fertilizer. We need fossil fuels to make ammonia, which is methane, water, and air using steam methane reforming to produce the hydrogen and something called the Haber process, um, which essentially, um, so essentially, Fossil fuels are needed to make this fertilizer. Um, so um, I, I think that Vivek's stance is to be able to reduce um, or be smart about how, how what we define as green energy. Right. We all want to make our impact on the world less than right. what it is. But to quantify the we price... We do not want to destroy our home. We don't, nobody wants to, right? But to, to first of all... We can't quantify what mining lithium batteries is doing to our. We need. We need. I mean, the trucks just used to move the haul the rock. They run off of gas. So you know, if you think that you and hopefully people who buy like Teslas and electric cars or who want to be green understand the costs from a from a footprint. Even though your carbon footprint is now nothing, or you think it's nothing, we'll go to the next part because you have a Tesla. We'll know what did it cost to make the battery for the Tesla. And to mine all this, all all the parts for the battery, and then also think about where you're getting the electricity to charge your Tesla. Where is the electricity coming burning from? Burning coal. Burning coal. Burning. Uh, you know. So I think a lot of people, um, and France being the perfect example of, of of the uh, of atomic energy of uh, of of power plants. Um, you know, I I think that is the closest thing that we're going to have to clean or green energy, right? Is nuclear, nuclear, nu nuclear, <laughs> nuclear energy, right? Yeah. yeah. I mean, I mean, France, I, I don't want to, I don't know what the statistic is, but I know France is majoritively running on nuclear energy. And I think that if we understood that today's technology could, we could make it much safer, much cleaner, and we could run our energy in a much more efficient way running off nuclear, 
if only the populace would be not so afraid of it right. because of what happened in Chernobyl, right? Or, Correct. Or Fukushima, right? Yes. So, yeah, man. Yeah. Yeah, scare tactic to to prevent that technology. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. This is this this talk got pretty damn deep, dude. Yeah, very good. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. But uh anyways, man. Uh it's good talking to you, man. Absolutely. And yeah. I, I really enjoyed myself. So yeah. anytime you want me to come back, let me know. Hell yeah, man. Give good another shit. round, yeah. Yeah, let's Yeah. Good seeing you. Have a blast.